So, as we approach our end here, with the second to last episode of the Age of Ashes, here on Twitch.tv slash official Paizo, probably. Again, here in the Red Pyramid, any episode could be the last. We, uh... There's not a whole lot of scripting and structure that goes on back here. As evidenced by anyone that's watched this since its second chapter <laughs> will <laughs> certainly be aware of that. What is structure? You no. know, when we did <laughs> Cade and got an entirely new party. <laughs> we are playing not only for our lives, but for the life of the show. I will not hesitate to end it <laughs> literally today if we all die. I still have summon elemental. I have one left. <laughs> It's level five. Please level five. Yeah, George over there, he, can, he provides flanking. He does. He's he a does. good boy. He, no, he makes the boss waste an action, killing him with a backhand. What he said. <laughs> but the question then is what happens afterward? And before we head into today's episode of the Age of Ash, I want to talk a little bit about that. But first of all, thanks to Paizo for sponsoring our show here on the network that they've sponsored uh, the Two Perception show for like three, three and a half years now. It was War for the Crown before this. Glad to still be here. We're having a fun time. Glad you guys are still enjoying the show as well, supporting us so we can continue to, you know, do incredibly stupid things on camera uh, day in and day out. Thanks for other partners, Norse Foundry, and their great heap of wonderful metal dice. They have some really cool, like, Christmas kind of advent style deals going on their site right now which is I real nice i love it and we still have our discount code which goes by in the corner down below me uh for 10 percent off of everything just if you want to just buy something normal like uh we got arc and forge our map making slash virtual tabletop software code 2per also goes down there for some discounts on some of their main asset packs sirenscape and their wonderful sounds but when we finish this adventure i would like to say hopefully not today <laughs> Hopefully next week. We'll do our best. I'm leaving. There are several questions that leaves unanswered. One, as many of you have uh, very fervently pointed out and been curious, and I do not blame you at all because it is just an accurate observation. Give me one second. I got way too many books on my side shelf here. Uh, pointed out, this is book five. Um, there is a book six of the Age of Ashes. Several things on that. This... This is like the, the final push in the Scarlet Triad. This is the enemy we've been fighting for the entire adventure. This is, this is I, I feel, almost a natural narrative conclusion to our adventures. But that said, from when I first started building this campaign, I could not wait to run this final chapter. So starting early next year, the Two Perception show is going to get... A second edition. We're going to reclaim our second edition. We used to have two shows a week. We're going to be the two perception And we're shows. going to go back to that. Friday evenings over on my personal channel, we are going to be running a second weekly adventure. Still at this table. Still the live play. No Discord, Zoom call, Roll20 nonsense. Only putting out live play content at this table going forward. And that is going to start with the epilogue to the Age of Ashes with book six, Broken Promises, which is an absolute banger of a title, hmm. given some of the information that we have come across last week. Ooh, Broken Backward is Neck Orb. I'm... That actually makes a lot of sense. So Are excited we for this. Does. Are we going to feed the dragon the orb? So excited for this. About another 12 to 15 episodes, I estimate, to wrap up the loose threads. Finish oh, our March to on. 20. We'll sandbag. It'll be at least 40. And get everything <laughs> nicely and neatly organized. So that raises the question of what are we going to be doing here? Well, once we wrap this up next week, Oh, and the Age of Ashes here on twitch.tv slash official Paizo come to an end. We're preparing a new series of show for you, shows for you guys to also start next year. Same time slot. Still going to be here on the Saturdays, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific. But we're going to start a new show that for now I am calling The Hook. It is going to be a journey <laughs> that we all have long since forgotten how to walk. It is going to be an adventure 
the likes of which we have not experienced in generations because, well, it's a new journey entirely. We're going back to level one. I don't want to. It's going to be cursed. Stop. <laughs> Coming down from this, it is going to be hella cursed. And our first foray into the hook, a series of adventures, which is going to take us to every possible <laughs> I have no idea if that counts on the microphone. I can only imagine. I really hope it did, just for hilarity's sake. Um, oh my god. An adventure that is going to take us to all corners of Galarian and possibly even beyond is going to start with a classic. That is the Curse of the Crimson Throne. I have never personally played or run this adventure, but I have heard a great amount of the legends <laughs> that accompany this tome here. I believe the second ever full length adventure path from Paizo. And uh, alongside with that, we I have this nice thing right here, which you may notice is uh, strangely proportioned and very fat because this actually I believe is an anniversary pocket edition for the Curse of the Crimson Throne. That is the entire adventure path in one book. This is all six chapters of Curse of the Crimson Throne in one book. Also, they have a pawn collection for it, which I wasn't sure about, but they do, so that's cool. We get to keep our neat tokens. Sweet. Question on everyone's mind, obviously. Uh, excuse me, Squiddish, that is a first edition campaign, correct. Are we going back to first edition? No, we're not. Uh, well, I mean, we're playing this, so kind of a little bit. First but edition story. One of the great advantages of this system is how easy it is to kind of wing things. If you guys opened a room to an NPC right now that you weren't supposed to fight and somehow ended up coming to blows, not to just make up some stats on the fly, I think with Tui you can do that pretty decently. Mm -hmm. I know he's going to have uh, maybe 38-ish AC. He's going to swing at plus 32-ish, and he's going to have somewhere in the neighborhood of 250 health. And then I'll figure out some cool powers as we go. <laughs> it's easy to very quickly generate functional content and it's even easier to take existing first edition content and run it with the second edition systems and to start off the hook we're going to show you just how easy it is playing curse the crimson throne in the new edition of the game it's going to be a good time i have been waiting so long to announce all of this stuff but i wanted to wait until i had the cool things and we were 100% positive on what all we were doing going forward after this before I talked about any of it. So, to recap briefly, assuming the disasters <laughs> take us this day. No promises. After our climax in the Age of Ashes here on the Paizo channel next week with our finale, you can find us early next year with the epilogue to this adventure on my own personal network running Broken Promises Book 6, and our new series taking us to the Curse of the Crimson Throne. Back to some level one rusty dagger shank town. And boy, howdy, does the beginning of Curse of the Crimson Throne really epitomize the rusty dagger <laughs> shank culture. It's We're going to get killed by rats. The again. daggers are going to be exceptionally <laughs> rusty, rusty as we go down there. And oh, boy. I mean, I need it could some be worse. We could anchor like a flock of angry chickens again. If if we pool all of our reserve cash, we may be able to afford an anti-plague potion. And nah. then the long straw gets to drink it. More importantly, we get something to do on a Friday night that's not like, you know, what we usually do. And so we're going to have Friday and Saturday 2 Perception content coming for you guys with a second show in addition to this one. All live, all at this table, no Zoom calls over Roll20 ever again in my life. I stopped, I patently refuse to run one of those ever again uh, that I have to do all of the work for at the very least that I'm in charge of. But today, we have to get back into this. Okay. We've been working against the Scarlet Triad nearly since the beginning. And I feel like at this point, this red pyramid, this stronghold of theirs, you can put your head on, my friend. This stronghold of theirs is truly a challenge unlike any other we have faced. The resources of the Scarlet Triad, the depths of their operation are 
beyond extensive. And we have fought our way through it with only two, fortunately, quickly uh, (laughs) resolved deaths so far. I don't remember it. Dude. I just realized something. Sorry, you weren't there at the time. (laughs) (laughs) That explains everything. We have fought our way here to the pyramid beyond this city. No one's going to get that reference. No No one's going to get that reference. Must be nearing the end. We have seen no sign of either of our primary goals. Of course, our personal motivation delving here to stop their operation is to find and almost certainly slay at this point Edric (laughs) Tregal. The leader of the triad. He the may perfect. give up and agree to go quietly. He has such a punchable face. He's if the he perfect did, boy. I said He's preferably. Sorry. Would you rather, Roshin, that he does surrender and submit himself to the law, or would you rather get the cross of blades? Don't lie to me. We didn't say submit him to the law. <laughs> you know, I, the thing Tregal's is... Tregal's like, not leaving here alive. I mean, yeah, but that's because that's the evil side of the table, so... <laughs> I mean, that makes Thank you, sense. evil side of the table. Hey. <laughs> the neutral side of the table. <laughs> Treagle's not leaving here alive. <laughs> there you go. Treagle's not leaving here a a whole man. But as we left off, he'll be right. You just don't like him because he stole your kid. Several That's a good reason. Levels Stockholmed your daughter of catacombs. <laughs> okay. Beneath the ancient red pyramid, <laughs> we have found well, ourselves uh, among some strange architecture. Strangely organized, massive hallways uh, fit for passage by giants leading around strange central chambers, cutting off at awkward angles uh, to clearly later added bed chambers and smaller storage air, storage environs. We have faced some of the Scarlet Triad's elites. We have faced incredible demons, demons and devils all They have summoned and bound to their whims. We have dealt with some of the esoteric defenses of the ancient pyramid itself. Uh, I just realized something. This is the only game I've ever played where we literally only learned what the plot was literally like two sessions before the end of this book. You had all of the pieces. (laughs) You just didn't know how they fit together until last week when we finally realized the true purpose of the Scarlet Triad and Tregal's origin. Big meanies. But knowing now that he hails from the Hermaean City of Promise, having been raised, trained, and sent into this world by Minkare, one of the greatest dragons ever to walk Galarian, and that his objective is solely to recreate the orb to wrest control of the Isle from said dragon to use their collective power to ward off to Hawk. Well, that doesn't erase everything he still has to answer for, even if we did think that was a valid idea. I don't know exactly where anyone's at on that one. Wait, wait you mean you mean Treagle is just another would-be tyrant trying to usurp a throne for noble purposes? Oh, man. Roshin's having a great time in his adventure. Roshin's like, man, get in that bucket with everyone else. This is great. I refuse. I'm we... practicing retorts in my head for when I meet him. <laughs> <laughs> he's mentally rehearsing the like, burns that he's going to gonna dispense to this man. We had left off with you chasing one of his elites down a hallway here at Passage of the North, leaving quite a few doors unopened behind you. Uh, but seemingly, this strangely awkward curtained hall continues onward to a large double door, which may lead more directly to at least one of your prizes, but that is all to circumvent the second of the objectives that have sent you down here. The city of Katapesh having unleashed you to recover one of the Pact Masters that Regal claims to have taken, and they seem to believe he may not be offing. I guess we'll rescue the one of the leaders of the city of slavers. I, oh, do we have to? I, 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 mean, I, I, kinda, I have to. I mean, I kind of promised. I feel bad if I didn't. Did we promise? Did yeah, we I, I did. I think yep. we said we'd do our best. No, you did promise. Didn't I, you? I did. You did one of those heroic promise things. You know what? Just because mm-hmm. you didn't get to do it first does not mean you get to, you oh, know. Yeah, I was really chomping at the bit to do that. <laughs> I didn't really want you talking at all. I noticed. But as we come back in today in this hallway here, uh, quite a few mortal battles under our belts. How is everyone looking at the moment? Rez? 
I think, <laughs> I think we healed up pretty good last session before we. I don't know that you did. You, I no, got like a thousand yards. No, we did. We, we, we healed, healed to full. full. Yeah. You, oh, wait, you had the. Well, right. Y'all. Y'all healed to full. You all healed to full. Yeah. <laughs> they got part of that. Everybody who made intelligent but decisions with about their character. <laughs> we, we don't do that over in this seat of the table. If you sit in this seat, that is something and you do not do. And this is just the royal we took the dice cam away from Oh, wait, you. no, no, no. Mataz has your con score, too. Never mind. It is the royal we. Rez, uh, a couple of arrows sticking out of his body still uh, from this last commando you'd taken down. He's not looking fantastic, but the rest of you at least physically have been restored by Rishin, so uh, pretty potent magic here with the Moment of Renewal. The spell goes off. Feeling Everybody awesome. else gets a fantastic heal, and Raz is just over there like, did you <gasps> leave me out? Did you yeah. not cast it on me? <laughs> 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 no, she cast it on him. Uh, just like, I, got, to him. <laughs> I got what, like 17 health off of it? Probably 34. It's two rests. It, yeah, you, oh. you get your level doubled. It's got 34 off of it. But only you get that. That's like a almost a third level heal. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> Thank you. That's pretty good magic. That's pretty good magic. That. <laughs> pretty good magic. <laughs> All right, you know what? You know what? All right. No, 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 no. You let him accept the consequences of his actions, <laughs> and we'll get him off I mean, when he inevitably fair, goes down later. Every time. I think I've just the called consequences you. Consequences of his fortitude save. <laughs> yes. Look, we'll get, we'll res him later. How does I mean, res look? I don't think later. I can actually. I'm above half. That's pretty, that's... pretty wounded. Couple arrows sticking yeah. out of him. Uh, pretty All bloody. Right, sad fine. Oh, wait, wait, arrows. I got shot. Yeah, that commander shot I, him I thought several times. No, still she, suffering from the the laser. No, she yeah. ran past and he, then shot me uh, here, twice. Oh, right. Give him yeah. the really big healing potion, the one that we got in the room. I oh, that's right. I have it. Here you go. <laughs> give him the thing that I give want. it to him. I'm not talking to Rez right now. You give it to him. <laughs> He's mad at him for dying. Dude, every time it's a I have tried to save well, you in that? the past three well, days. We have a handy dandy is item card. a potion card. or an elixir of life? Greater potion. Greater potion. Oh, cool. Did you guys grab the cards that I gave you? You were you, mooning you, over it. I thought you wanted to keep it close to your heart. You did. did you, Go wait, to the table and did, get the card. Why me? Because you're the one who wants to drink it. it. <laughs> I have to it's like, okay. Duck. The lizard will get it. We have... Uh, this Studio for midgets. Several useless, uh, useful reference decks now, also thanks to Paizo for sending those down to us. One of which has uh, solved this problem specifically, which there's a card for everyone that I made a stack of specifically for you guys. I didn't. It's not over here. I didn't hear any of that. Loser. You probably have it over there. I mean, there's plenty of condition cards. It's down here because no one would take it. It's down here because no one would take it. Here you go. Because no one would take it. <laughs> He found it. It didn't keep it near and dear to his heart because he thought it was so cool. As he pulls it out of his vest pocket <laughs> to hand it to us. And all the different levels of healing potions. It was greater. So, you know, yeah, I'm trying to remember what they all are. Plus 20. Ooh. See, that's a nice amount of health. Yes. If only Rur was here, he'd show you how small that healing really is. Would you stop measuring again? Except, you know, the healing from the dead isn't very good. So. Aww. Yeah. I want to play a full, it. like, high level healer. It's in it could be really 24. nice. We're taking down. 44. That 34? 44. Oh, I was like, exactly the same as I'm going to. Well, don't give it back to me. This is your reference for healing potions. I mean, that was the last for healing all potion one? I think that we have. Oh, no, there's a major one here, too. You want the major one? Just one second. Let me. Actually, the major one is like. Crazy it's actually good. pretty girthy. The higher level healing potions are pretty potent. Yeah, Dude. that's 8d8 plus 30. Hand you want me. me to hold I won't on drink to it. it? You won't drink it? I won't drink it right now. Then I'm not going to give it to so, you. I'll drink it when I go down. Do no, you won't because you'll be down and unconscious. <laughs> Do you want me to Someone hold on to it, it so I can stealthily administer it? Don't you have some? I have a greater elixir. Uh, so, so it's not enough? Just you give it. One? No, no, give it to me. I can literally transport to it to somebody with a spell. We need to give it to someone who can use it. Yeah, give it to me. Here you go. Because it's going to be used to get someone up off the ground. I have thoughtful gift. I will send it on. Oh, how thoughtful. Now, the question is, All right. will thoughtful gift let them drink it? It's Raz is dead on the ground. Take it off thoughtful the court. Gift. Thoughtful gift, it just teleports into his mouth. <laughs> but you are uh, now here as you're attending to Raz's wounds in this hallway. Uh, having left this strange, uh, so, uh, not, I can't say circular, really. It's very angular. 
uh, but wrap around passageway, 15 to 20 feet wide and near and even taller all around with this central column that it does have a central runic column. It does have a very heavily carved entryway on its north end facing you in this uh, in this passage. Uh, several other doors along the western side you would simply bypassed, having chased one of the commandos up here trying to prevent them from retrieving further assistance. Uh, this hallway itself, of course, continuing off to the north, uh, jutting off, as all the passageways in this pyramid seem want to do, almost for no sensible purpose you can really determine. None of them just go in straight lines. They jackknife at odd angles for no apparent reason, cutting 45 degrees and then back again before uh, concluding in a massive uh, wooden door frame split into two and ornate pieces, clearly much larger and thicker than m much of the rest of the simple doors that have been down here, and one that looks much more ancient as well. I guess we should backtrack along the other doors so nothing comes up to bite us. Why don't you just be caught from behind? Do we have to... Apparently, he's down this hallway. We can just go take care of him right now. Yeah, but I, I have a feeling it's going to be a little bit more complicated than you think it is, and I yes. really don't want to get jumped from behind. I know it's going to be, but he's so close. I know, sweetheart. I know you're having, you're really excited, and I understand why. He's just wrapping, like, claws on the wall. But you know what? You know Scraping what? Scraping layers <laughs> off. <laughs> there could be some really nice stuff in there that you haven't found yet. And if we don't go in and see what the stuff is, somebody else could take the stuff. And yes, then it wouldn't be your stuff. It'd be their stuff. If we kill all of them, it's our stuff anyways. But what I'm saying is, what if, like, while we're in there dealing with him, they take the stuff and run because they hear us doing it? And you never know, Trishik. They actually might actually have some sort of fancy poisons. They seem to be very good about keeping all of those things. And your eyes always light up in a strange way whenever you see them. Yes, the lady did use a pretty good one on me, actually. <laughs> I know she did. Get it? She wouldn't have any more on her, would she? Um, the oh. one, this commando here in the hallway? Yeah. yeah. I do not believe we, we pretty much took her down and that yeah, comically like, sprawled out so long we basically yeah. cut a session immediately afterward. Um, she would have several plus two weapons for the plus two weapon thrown, uh, plus two striking, a plus two greater striking, and a plus two resilient armor. Uh, but the poison she had, she seemed to have already used. What a uh, shame. Only having had a single dose, which she had inflicted upon, I think it was you, actually. It was yeah. totally mm -hmm. him. It was, it was him. Completely him. He was not happy about it. <sighs> Call that one karma. I'll make sure to get more slumber wine. So. <laughs> uh, I guess well, let's head this way first. Yeah, just going to go backwards. And is there a door on our side of that thing in the middle? Uh, there would. The northern end of that... This central pillar that has more of these uh, runic accoutrements, more of these accents, these channels for the energy that seems to permeate the structure itself, uh, directing it to the center of this nexus below the pyramid are much thicker, much more ornate upon the outsides of this, uh, extending across the doorway stone on the, on the northern front that would just be facing you at this passageway. Uh, as you would come into your right, would be another pair of doors. Uh, one in the corner, the uh, northwestern corner of this passageway, immediately to your right around as you moved, mm -hmm. uh, which is set an angle into the wall and curves at its top, set not into a simple rectangular frame, but arched, carved with an image that looks to be almost a flame, uh, but looks somewhat almost uh, like a bird's wing going from one lower corner up to the higher opposite uh, carved across it, uh, as well as an iron barred cell door. Uh, it looks, again, like something you would find in a jail a little further down into the western wall as well. I think there are three passageways visible from here that you have not explored as of yet. Then we'll deal with this counterclockwise in order of closest to farthest, probably. So. I wonder, if the, I wonder if the bird door is an ostuary. No reason to go to like the second door and have people come from three sides. So this gives you a good shot here. You have the yeah. one, I, the one that is in the central section that looks more like a column. So you realize there's a door in it. It is pretty isolated from the other two. It is clearly as you have been able, you have walked all the way around it at this point. Uh, an independent own, structure. Yeah. Oh, there's right. actually a door yes. right yes. here. Yes. Yeah. To this central piece, right. It is that has a walkway you've gone full, you've fully orbited it. You know this unless it connects on another level down 
It's the there escalator. Is, there is no mm. way this interacts with shaft. either of the two other doors <laughs> to the side. Well, then, uh, if everyone would like to spread out, I will uh, open the door to sneak myself inside. All right. All right. So I guess back to exploration actions. Uh, what are so? What would you all be doing, preparing to continue through the red pyramid? You're obviously sneaking. You're obviously scouting. I don't need to ask this side of the table. And, this is the same seeking. thing you do every day. Yeah, the double. <laughs> Res. Just recalling knowledge. Thinking real hard. Thinking Roisin. real hard. Uh, Roshin's got her shield up. Ready in case of bad. Yeah. That's me. Doing the big seek. Ready in case of bad. <laughs> so. The door to this, surprisingly, given its stone uh, construction and uh, ornate work, does not bear any kind of lock or intricate latch and opens as simply as any other. Swinging outward to reveal that near the entirety of this central chamber... More doors. ...is one open section, actually. Uh, the walls around the outside are several feet thick, uh, lending a fairly large divide from itself uh, to this walkway around the outside. But it is all one contingent hollow within. A hollow that is inset with shelving, carved into the several foot thick stone walls at almost uh, <laughs> offset near random heights throughout this chamber filling the full perimeter of the room, packed with all kinds of strange alchemical and magical accoutrements and instruments. A couple of coins on the floor, I, too. There are, in fact, a couple of coins immediately <laughs> inside the threshold of the doorway, a pair of them, which seem to have been left here uh, similarly, perhaps, since time immemorial. Two down the table towards Trishik, and then Marshall outside as he picks his nose... Oh notices a <laughs> glimmer of gold that seems to have been pushed out by the door Gross. itself for two more. Mm, wow. 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 <laughs> Baller. Thank man. you. This yeah. man had a stash uh, and he was oh. ready. Funneling the evil side of the table. <laughs> that was a girthy stash of channel points. He's been waiting for that one for a minute. He's ready. To hey, he's still going. Oh my God. Oh there you go. He's been Whoa. waiting for his Whoa. opportunity. Whoa. We get back to me. What nine. is happening? He's Wrapping around. And this my... is the true vault of the Red Pyramid. <laughs> <laughs> As no simple coins, no painted or no gilded ceramics, but a wash of incredibly powerfully enchanted magical tokens roll out from inside this laboratory. Uh, a deluge near washing away the members of the party here. <laughs> I'm waiting to see if it continues going around the table. <laughs> There's this thing called hope after all. That is 30,000 channel points you hoarded Jeez, for that. Dude, he dang. was ready. He was ready. He, he has a stash. I'm pretty only... sure he has more because he was talking about having enough to give everyone three at one That's point. That's why I'm waiting a second. There it is. Roshin oh. is continuing around. Had to look how to I'm just going to go ahead and assume there's going to be a second one, and I'll go ahead and bring you the second <laughs> token right there. I'm going to be... Nice. We'll see. You can hand it back. Could be bank error in my favor. Bank error <laughs> in your favor? <laughs> oh, my little treasure chest of hero points is you getting just, woefully dry here. You were just talking about having more villain points than the entire table? I did. I made an offhanded comment before we started about how I had two villain points, and the entire table together had one, so... That does Karma. not appear to have lasted literally at all, so yeah, it didn't work out. Uh, karma has come back around. Thank you, Justinian. Yeah. Wow. Yes, thank you. That was insane. But, uh, elsewhere within this table, uh, within this room, are several tables against the back wall, against some of the side walls. Uh, one standing just a few feet inside the door frame, the back of this desk, uh, it having a, a wooden back into it, uh, rising up behind the shelf that would traditionally be pushed up against the wall as well, uh, almost dividing the room itself a little bit. Each one of these covered with more manuals and tools, magical and mundane, uh, clearly forming a very well-stocked, to the point of being somewhat cluttered, magical laboratory. Packed to the brim with every different kind of uh, alchemical alembics and retorts and magical sigils and... and uh, carving kits, bits of iconography and runic guides that one could possibly desire. It is 
a lot. Mm. Well, I'm going to sneak into the room, pick up those two artifact tokens on the way in, and uh, we start snooping. Huh? As you get in here and commence your snoopery. You kind of blame <laughs> him, He's a couple. Like, this is what you promised him. More coins. I think I literally have two tokens in Chaos too. Chaos is almost Thank literally you. just empty. Uh, I'm again gonna assume that's another pair of them. I'm gonna, the site delay is. I'm gonna Trishik, need them. Before you, you there. before you touch anything, this place has a history of you know stuff not being real. Do you mind if I like take? Trishik take is a look already at in it? the room. D- d- the door slams. Is it, door slams. <laughs> Gas doubles. <laughs> <against rain. laughs> I would be <laughs> fine with that. But he comes in. You uh. Make me a perception check, good sir. Rolling the dice I traded you for the day. Good luck with your Malachite, sir. I have the cursed die. Why did you do this? Because uh, I have faith. That is a 12, so 41. Uh, with the 41, as you look around the chamber, you are not really one with magic. <laughs> I know You poisons. are one with alchemy very much, and this all looks ancient. Uh, some of the, even just the working of the glass itself along many of these assemblies of kits uh, imply that it was made with access to a lot less methods of proper refinement and and purification than we have today. Uh, The glass itself isn't even perfectly smooth. It's uh, almost a little bit rough, kind of feeling like coarse stone, looking like coarse stone even. Uh, some of the wrought metal that holds many of these pieces together is much the same, as is the binding across the books. Everything within this laboratory is thousands of years old. Um, and Knock over an alembic. It is, Whoops. And, and it looks like, based on the layer of dust across mm-hmm. near everything in the room, it has been largely undisturbed within all of that time. It doesn't even look to you immediately like the Scarlet Triad has done anything within a chamber that looks like it holds an incredible amount of potential knowledge and useful equipment. I, yeah, I feel is like it, I feel like we should leave this room alone. Is it, is it's a bit suspicious, isn't it? Is it safe in there, Mr. Chishik? Where are your goggles, please? Is uh, have chemical in nature. Okay, with well, a 41, uh, again, this lab hasn't been used in so long. There's nothing inside any of these. Um, they are all empty, and any, any, even any reagents that were kept around here were long since removed or expired of their own volition. Um, there is nothing active in here. There are no potion bottles containing any suspicious substances, nor do you see any signs of any kind of trap or anything organized. Um, looking through the chamber that 41, you would see a couple of things that could possibly be useful. Uh, of course, you would have more than several Expanded alchemist kits worth of tools that you could collect out of here. I already um, have a modern yeah, one. Yeah, with, with no real difficulty. That would be, uh, again, just an, an ancient and ornate kind of style, but no less effective. Uh, you would also see that there were uh, what appeared to be a couple of gemstones that were used as focuses for various magic and rituals on uh, some of the tables at the back end, where it looks like that was more of the work that was done which I'm and crystals and sigils, whereas this table closer to the door was more alchemical in nature. Uh, and then, of course, all around this is the books and the manuals and the tomes of knowledge and procedure. This will be useful later, yes. Based on everything here is valuable information, recipes, nothing immediately useful. Yeah, but it won't suffer from being left here for another hour or so. No. But in fact, it's all gone. We unsealed the room. <laughs> <laughs> the hawk has escaped. <laughs> he was trapped in the Alembic. Well, four of you all crowded around the door watching, uh, looking. You can't really see Trishik as he uh, go disappears in the room talking. here. But yeah, you can. You can. If you're talking, uh, you can hear his voice just again, kind of oddly emanating out from seemingly nothing inside. <laughs> he just emanates from my head usually. But yeah, I can just talk to you directly. The room itself would appear to be completely still and lifeless. Uh, I guess let's go check another door that might have some actual, I don't know. Waddle on out. And we still have two there. Door. And we have the, actually the one we blocked out down further south as well. Skinny lizard. Quick. I love that you can just <laughs> squeeze the lizard, put him in, and expand the lizard I mean, again. He does have tight squeeze. Quick squeeze. Or a quick squeeze, yeah. So they're coming back out from this uh, strange laboratory here. Mm. Uh, which 
Which one are we heading to? The door that you would block down Bird. below? Well, there's, so we, I just want to make sure we don't forget that one. Bird. So we can we can go in the counterclockwise rotation this is one, right? uh, Bird. suggesting. Corner. Yeah, this one. Mm. Oh, A bird wing door. Bird. I hate Bird. You. Heading back uh, around now up to the Bird. furthest northwest corner of this, you want to go ahead and organize yourselves there. This door, uh, where at first, as you look over, given the Bird. massive size door. of this passageway, I mean, again, this, this whole studio we're in right now is like just as wide as the hallway. Uh, what looks at first to be set into a, a small, well, again, it's kind of common in the Red Pyramid, like a, just a corner slice of this room, the door at a 45 degree angle. Raz uh, cowering in the corner. <laughs> perpendicular to the walls itself for whatever reason, is not actually attached. I guess he can reach. We're organizing ourselves yeah, as we go. move around here. I forgot Chushik has, has calm reach, down, so honey. you can do it that way. Fair enough. Uh, organizing yourself around here. This this corner is not actually completely straight. Uh, it would just slightly curve in the uh, foot or so of leeway it has on either side of the door before it meets into the walls here, uh, implying the chamber within on the other side of it may well be circular in shape. They clicked and dragged a circular room onto the map and dropped it when they were designing the place. Yes, that's not sure how the, how the architecture worked out, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, Makes sense. And they have magic. So that's how God does it. That's how some crazy wizard does it. Like, we have knowledge, uh, knowledge check. I think, boy, give me an arcana. I saw the green, I saw the green die, and I got confused. Would, occultism would work too, actually, because it's just magical tradition, really. Magical tradition. That's just basic magic knowledge. Or a 42. Oh, okay, very, you, yeah, that's that's a basic magic stone knowledge. Stone shape. Uh, you would know a stone shape. But, but be much like... The chisel. You have no idea where I'm going with this. No, but, like, there's multiple instances of, like, round room is easy make. Yeah, that's not what this is about. <laughs> Knowledge arcane. How could do room, room round? No. <laughs> <laughs> He's really stuck on this round room thing. I mean, that's one Knowledge yeah. arcane, why do room yeah. round? Uh, much like Rotund. a uh, circular lens can be used to focus the light or provide even magnification, so too as this whole pyramid seems to be a conduit for magic, uh, circular chambers or sigils can provide a, sig uh, a similar channel through which uh, magical energy can run or be focused to a central point or to the perimeter of the uh, the circle itself. It's very common. Uh, you would know, very common being a loose term, but like very common in someone that had the resources to make something like the Red Pyramid, ancient sites of power like this, to have a, uh, a round chamber acting as a focus to something at its heart, something in the center to which this is all a channel two. It's interesting because from what you gauge, what the two of you gauge of the runes carved around this passageway, much of the energy the Red Pyramid was meant to channel and this bit of an aid it was meant to be in summoning is channeled towards that central laboratory, not this circular room. So this might be an independent hmm. system from the rest of the pyramid. Um, all right. Um. Oh my god. A ham radio There's room so much going on in this red TV. pyramid. This is one big magical focus. This is like a like 2000 year old turbo wizards playground. It's like literally the the hall design all of this just for magical focus. This one big sigil. I bet you if you looked at the architecture from above it would make a giant magical sigil. Sigil. It's kind uh, of possible. Yeah. Yeah, but it, this room doesn't seem to be the focus of it. It looks like it was that one. That would also go a good ways to explain the odd angles of many of the hallways and why they uh, send a jackknife off near at random. It's not anything to do with their uh, ease of access or even the ease of work to the stone. Ease of But magic. more of the conduits that they're using to channel towards this laboratory and possibly towards this circular chamber as well. Or to disperse the energy to make sure it doesn't go where it's not supposed to. Uh, we probably shouldn't scratch out some of those sigils. Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, carry on. You're good. Um, uh, boom. I guess let's go in. It'll explode in a couple hundred Just years. It's fine. Peek your head in there. Just see, what, see what's going on. So pushing open uh, this door, which, well, again, not locked uh, anyway, would be much heavier of a door. Uh, set on much heftier hinges. It would take a pretty decent amount of force uh, to push 
inward. We'll just lean on it. And it is set. I mean, it's the, for you, it's it's nothing for you guys. But I mean, comparative to your tradition, like most of the doors set this place a standard door. It's a pretty good amount of weight, and it's not just set against a threshold in the far end to form a seal like a standard door is. As you push in, you can see there is actually a few extra inches around in every direction where the entirety of the door sits soundly into an exterior stone frame on your side hmm. uh, to seal it on all ends and make it near impossible to be forced outwards without destroying it utterly. Uh, and what it reveals inside is a very interesting room. And bear with me because, boy, there's a lot going on in here. Oh, <laughs> That's a pyramid. It is, in fact... This is the scheme. A circular room with several clearly visible occupants within. Mm. Oh. Uh, the door would let out to what almost looks like a catwalk. About five feet wide, this landing would extend out, and then a further five feet to what looks like the top of a spiraling staircase that descends down to the middle section of this room, displaced down about eight feet. Eight feet from this walkway directly in front of you. Uh, the walkway which rings all the way around the outside of this 100 foot wide chamber. Uh, it is about as wide across as that central laboratory and the entire walkway around it. This is a massive chamber. And at its heart is what appears to be a forge. A massive work of curved, pointed, pillared metal uh, offset to the cardinals with four gaping, burning mouths pointed out at each uh, diagonal direction. Glowing not with a traditional fire and, oh, as you can see, not with coals, but just with some sort of innate heat, possibly even just an energy that seems to pulse a very deep, almost blood red from within the heart of this massive 20-foot construction itself. Mm. Uh, at the bottom of each of these open maws in this forge, it is just flat, a flat metal bin. There is nothing in there burning or smoldering at all, yet flames lick across its surface all the same, seemingly feeding upon nothing. The whole glow and the uh, and the, uh, the, uh, the fires themselves all seem to slowly fade and swell in unison, almost as if the thing itself was slowly breathing. Underneath this round walkway that rings the entire chamber, you can see metal shelves set in around the full... Uh, perimeter of the room, supporting all kinds of ingots of metals of various kind, kinds, uh, sacks of coal, filling a massive amount of this, uh, a wide assortment of blacksmithing tools and crucibles, small anvils, sheaves and ledgers full of different blueprints and a staggering amount of different molds for types of gear, armors, armor blades, other tools. It is a truly impressive sight to behold. The ceiling rising up from the outside here to a domed top 40 feet above the walkway you now stand on. Huge chamber. And as I said, several figures, which as you see them, they're gonna hear the, see the door, look up and see you guys. Uh, not you probably, but Roisin and Marshall staying there for sure. Uh, that seem to be sorting through some of the things down here. Um, two more members of the Scarlet Triads Elite, two more of their commandos, uh, one with a clipboard in hand who seems to be cataloging things and the other who seems to be poking underneath, uh, through the walkway near, almost underneath you. You just kind of see the lean back and just barely see the top half of his head as he looks up over the walkway towards you. Th these two men are aided by two things. <laughs> Rex. Things is a... Rez, make me a... <laughs> Religion check. Um, you know it's gonna be some kind of demon. Well, it's gonna be a bardic lore check. Bardic lore check. Oh, you don't have the. Let me. What's your modifier? Um, twenty. Bardic lore is a twenty-six. Twenty-six. Yep. While well, you are, by the context clues of everything that's happened in the pyramid so far, and just a fairly safe assumption, relatively confident they're demons of some kind. You have no idea what exactly they are. 
Uh, they are huge, hulking, obese figures uh, with massive boar-like snouts and tusks extending out beyond huge bulbous sagging chins. They are corpulent and disgusting to behold. Could they possibly um, be demons of gluttony? No, it would be possibly. I'm just I don't, going I don't know. I, hey, stop hey. medicating me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> legendary in religion. I you am would, legendary in religion. You could, you know, quite possibly make an assumption that since <laughs> demons are largely pivoted upon vices, that, you know, maybe, maybe it's a gluttony <laughs> demon. Shut up. But, uh... <laughs> Uh, each of them has a thick, greasy tuft of hair upon their head that turns into a mane running down the back of their neck and then fanning out across their shoulders and further down almost uh, past their waist. And two, like, comically tiny little wings situated back behind their shoulder Aww, blades that so could not possibly aid them in any way in flight. The creatures are perverse and wretched to behold. And they, too, certainly turn towards the door as it opens. No Im immediate reaction from themselves as they look down towards the catalog of the Scarlet Triad. And as he reaches down for his blade, so, too, do these demons snort with fury, readying themselves for battle. I need everybody to roll me some initiative, my friends. Battle cry? Did well, battle cry the guy that's closest inside, probably. Yep. Good enough for me. Um, can we, uh, did we do a 10 minute rest before? Yeah, that's uh, how, that's. I don't think so. I, don't th I think we just momented renewal, right? Yeah, you just yeah, that's renewal. right. Okay. You're right. Okay. Well, Marshall is going to immediately redeem one of those hero points because a one is bad. One hey, bad. He rolled me. I rolled me. Yeah. <laughs> I hate you. Hey, your Malachi rolled me a 19. Hey, it's your guy okay. rolled me a 20. I still rolled a one. Somehow. Did you one to one? Really? Yes, I did. I won to one. Huh. Huh. Interesting. Uh, uh, Odds. Do we have any bonuses aside from scouting? No. No. Okay. Just scouting. Right no. Because I, I, I would like to very much be able to cast some spells. And not well, I mean, it's can't good. Can't blow them all. Be crazy. Uh, it, stuff. It's good that you're going last, <laughs> because everyone will be out of your way for you to walk into the room and get big. This Resume. Forty-one. Forty-one. Roshin. Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. Rez? 47. 47. Marshall? 26. 26. You are literally 21 lower than Rez. Trishik? 52. You are literally double uh, Marshall's. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I rolled a one twice. That is, you literally won in a one? I, mean, I won in the one. You'll love to see it. So I got a I 20. I feel bad for wasting And that. you got a one, so that's a 19 right off the bat difference. Plus our modifiers are insanely different. Yeah. You literally 52 and a 26. Um, <laughs> <laughs> these big, ugly demons. Resume got a 47. Rasheen got... I some, got a 41. 41. Okay. Got Raz 30, got a 47. 47 was Raz was a 47. 37 for so Rasheen. A ten, okay, so there's a 10-point gauge here. And four Hold between on, me and number. Rasheen. 18. 43 is going to put the big, ugly demons in here. And the troops are going to be doing much worse and that a 33 are going to be down here. And then, and then you can certainly the one. battle yeah. cry. Ah, triple one. Closest. Are Did you, you really? Me? You're going into dice, yo. <laughs> yeah, tri if, you, if it rolls a one on all three of your... First, first three rolls for the session, probably just put it in the microwave and never roll it again. Yeah, like, I know, right? <laughs> I mean, it's Here. metal, so that's probably Here. a bad idea. Draugr. Yeah, yeah, you gotta get a fourth one. All right, I, I will use the Draugr one. <laughs> Don't touch it. I mean, I rolled trash too, but I didn't I mean, get one. I have a backup die too, but at the same time. Put it time. in the goblin. Put it in the Paizo goblin. Uh, 36. Yeah, put it in the Paizo goblin. Uh, 36. <laughs> it stays there until next week. Gentlemen here. I got, I got that thing where I got two stop blocks stinky. that are from the book that are pretty far away from each other. Yeah. Uh, 36 will fail. Okay. And you got natural one, so that will, uh... It'll do nothing. Is Battle Cry just an Intimidate check? It's just, yeah, an, it's intimidate. just an Intimidate. It's just a Demoralize. I believe... He kind of chokes on a, you know, bit of his own beard hair. 
when he's trying to scream at him. He goes to inhale it, and the whole beer goes in his mouth. <coughs> I think you're about to face negative Potato consequences. Potato plant and all. Just... I, I don't think there's a negative consequence. There is no there negative. Is, is there not? I think they're immune for... There is not. No, there's no, there's no, there's no, yeah, there's no critical failure. There's no negative to it. All right, Typically, Tashik, you're up first. The man is not frightened. Yeah, Typically, you get negatives on, like, special abilities related, but... Just to demoralize. I was him. curious if it like frightened yourself, like if you. <laughs> and I mean, then, uh, it is scary to accidentally inhale your own beard. Here are two gentlemen and two pigs. And here are two massive oh, demons. We have two. Of them. They are big. Look at their little tiny wings. They are holding hands. They got yeah. little tiny wings. Oh my wings. god. Uh, the scale of this map is such that this is gonna get very messy. Such is life. <laughs> I think once we move yeah. into the room, we once can... we move into the room, we can zoom it a little bit. Yeah. Right now, though, two I else. don't know that I've ever seen a triple nat one before. We have done the it before. Legend. I think that's a first. Trishik. So opening the door is initiative, no time to mark for death. Right. Opening those, they, they clearly all see each other as soon as it starts, yeah. And he's below me, so I can't reach him from here. Uh, he is on a platform that is eight feet below you. So, like, you could reach. It'd be an awkward swing. and probably give you, like, a minus two circumstance penalty to try and fight down. But with reach, you, you could. And the room's big. The room is 40 foot yeah. dome ceiling. It's huge, yeah. This room's massive. It looks like an observatory. Like, it's humongous. It's an observatory that's underground. Hmm. So it looks like an it observatory. Looks like <laughs> Not, clearly isn't. Um, I can't skirmish strike past you. So instead, um, I will move up to the edge and swipe down at him directly. Okay. I guess sneak up to the edge is the same thing. Seventeen. Okay. Um, so 17. that is Let's mark this page. So that's a forty-seven. A lot. Forty-seven. He's uh, flat-footed, and your minus two is functionally a wash. Uh, is almost... Do I have a minus two on the edge, like directly above him? Yeah, because you're trying to swing at a guy who's eight feet below you. Like... Was that your swing or is that your sneak? My sneak's irrelevant. I can't really fail. Okay. Well, you could roll a one, but. So, yeah, roll me the sneak. Just... That's not a one, I think. That's a three. It is pretty much not roll a one. Yeah. Um, He's so the RG. So I was trying to figure out what you guys yeah. freaking were. 47 is going to hit. Just a hit. With I a circumstance sad. penalty from trying to swing down from this upper ledge. Because he's like kind of, this this walkway you're on extends out. Like there's space underneath it. So he's like kind of close. That stops me, the, the man who's upside down all the time. Yes. When there's a physical barrier that you're standing on in your way? Yeah, it does. Yeah. That's no, I, I can literally, I have enough movement to like go on the underside of that if I want to. Do you want to, but that's not what you said. You said you're on the lift. I didn't realize I was climb. on like a, a thing oh overhead. God. No, I didn't realize it was an overhang. I mean, no, I you told did. you there was a we penalty. Told you, like, I described the thing. I told you there was a penalty for all your damage. Like, <laughs> 11, 14, 24, 30, 6, 41, 42, 54. 54. And then. Okay. I'm tempted to hit him again, but I'm going to do the smart thing, and I'm going to leave the room. Yeah. Walk in, walk back out, go around the corner, probably 15 feet. Enough where no one can see me. Actually, just like a cat. Yeah, literally just <laughs> runs like a cat. Someone runs out. Raz. Um, Raz is going, I'm going to trace the sigil on my armor and the, the activate the winged rune. Okay. And two, pay pages of pages of stuff to fly out from his back of his armor and form two wings. And he's like, well, Mr. Sheen, I think, think the big things are demons. You do good against those. Um... I'm not going in that room. Oh, I'm so proud you're learning. And then I'm going to linger in composition, inspire defense. So a 13 on the die makes it go off. Um, I don't even know what my modifier is anymore. 34, so it's a 47, which is a crit yeah, success. Definitely gonna yeah, so it lasts for, lasts for four rounds. Inspired, inspired defense. Woo. Because demons, rats is terrified. Okay. And with that, with all of you out here, the first, uh, the nearest, the southernmost of these two pig-like demons 
is going to, uh, as he turns, squealing and uh, with rage here. Uh, a strange guttural cry mixed with, again, almost comically high-pitched, like it sounds like a boar just squealing through the woods. He is going to uh, just sort of glide, his tiny little wings flapping. Oh my god. Glide up to the doorway, um, leaving himself up, uh, not at the door. Can- that's why but I like didn't go in the room. Ten and feet them not back to fly. from the door, um, flying forward, reaching out with one of these uh, incredibly corpulent hands. The bear itself, his fist barely able to wedge through this door frame, uh, flexing it as he pushes it through, swiping at Roshin. So he's he is fifteen he's feet away 15 from me. Fifteen feet away from you, okay. swiping at you. He is a very large boy. Uh. Roll twice. You have not. You do not have a reaction. No reaction oh, yet. that's right. I yeah. Do not. Uh, but it is. Uh, it's gonna be a thirty-four. Thirty-four? Really? Yeah. That's not a very terrible roll. Okay. No, that's good. I mean, it, 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 it smashes into the door frame clearly, and that's enough of it. Bleeds enough momentum away, where she's able to sh- to wedge it away. And continuing to oh. attempt <coughs> to uh, flail here. <laughs> Um, That's what happened after the hand came near you. Just squealing a bit with rage, <laughs> it shoots through and uh, just sort of smashes down, almost enveloping Roshin with a, uh, a natural 20. Oh, okay. Which is going to be a, that's good for 43. Uh, 40, natural 20 is a 43. Uh, second attack, yes. 44, it's agile. <laughs> it's it an actual bad hand. hand. All right, uh, it, well, okay. Yeah, did technically a crit because of natural 20, <laughs> so... What's your, what's your AC now? Uh, 40 with your ah, inspired attacks. They nice. are, uh, with their attacks, almost just sort of grasping at you. Like, these really are not the calculated intelligent strikes of most of the foes that you have faced in the pyramid so far. And they're, that's evident. Is this pigs. Almost as much, yeah, like by like surprise and luck is a crit more yeah. than it is. After the, the first attack, she's just like, how did they fit it in there? And then the palm just smashes. <laughs> the and hand's already tell, through the door yeah. at that point. You can tell that they are not extremely competent brawlers. Yeah. Uh, that said, bulk still counts for a decent amount, and you are going to take 50 points of slashing damage. Minus. Slashing? Oh, okay. Minus so it's got kind of like clawed, fatty hands. Okay. It's, they have nails. I'm surprised that's not bludgeoning. Yeah, I would. were I to put a damage type on this, I would make it bludgeoning, uh, but it is slashing. They're not even like visibly have claws in the art, I don't think. But it's, uh, it's slashy. Yeah. Um, the secular everyone's going to inspect the tokens, though. Their hands are kind of cut off of the tokens. <laughs> they have little claws. They have fingernails. They have fingernails. Oh, yeah, they got, they got little fingernails, little pointy fingernails. They so they're going to get some, get some slashes like, at you. It looks fingernails. like a fingernail. It's not like a big old it's claw. It's like a baby they, they fingernail. They swipe. They swipe. Use the Fioi swipes. It's like a baby fingernail. They're really sharp. The second oh. one, um, put it in front of the camera so that I can see. The second one, okay. further back Sorry. into the room, uh, seeing his companion here very much occluding the doorway is going to squeal <laughs> in a, uh, what appears to be more just sort of an upset fashion. <laughs> and that squealing uh, is going to turn into words. Just, <laughs> and it's going to sort of wobble <laughs> and then <laughs> down to a singularity and disappear before erupting into the space a little ways east of you in this passageway outside. Who is the closest person to Pigus as he arrives out there? And why is it Raz? Raz is behind a corner, sir. Yeah, Raz is in the corner. I'm shoving myself in the corner. Marshall and Raz are right there, huh? They're, we're um, both within reach. Huh. You're both incredibly small to him, so it's gonna be 50, 50 on this one. I'm gonna say here he goes Marshall's for. bigger. Huh. One, so two, that's three, how they got, to, they got got in the room. Four, five, six, Marshall. Uh, as he appears there, he's gonna be uh, a ways back. He does not need to be immediately. Yeah, he's, he's got like 15 10 foot reach. Back. Um, almost down on all fours, Maw opens to just make kind of a gap in the wobbling flash that is its face beneath, uh, beneath its snout as it just sort of swipes its lower jaw towards Marshall. Forty-seven. Not a crit. Not a crit is what we're after. Not raging yet. Paying dividends. Well, plus. Raz is plus yeah, one. Yeah, it literally the plus one. Yeah, it's literally the plus one. I love the plus one value. 
Remember the conversation we had? We had the conversation. You'll Bards are this. such yeah. force multipliers. You'll love this. Plus one is such always, a big deal always in defense. second edition. Mm -hmm. And now that they're coming to us, dirge of means. Then it is going to be 28 points of piercing damage from its teeth and tusks it swipes at you. 28, uh, okay. Now that I can understand. Your wave of this viscous just slobber <laughs> across <laughs> you and Roisin as it swings. Gross. Resme. They are gross beings. Um, uh, that's not Marshall we smell. Oh, 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 let's, let's speed things up just a little. Uh, Roisin, Allegro, uh, haste on you. On me? Yep, just oh, on you. Running out of seven little sauce, okay. Yeah, I'm not using seven levels right I'll now. I'll take it. Uh, Ash, and Garde, shield. Uh, Roisin, you are fast. I, I am fast. I am quickened, you might say. And with this new stack of handy status cards, I can keep track of it. We got extra ones now. I, I, I got tired of handing them all out, so you can just have your own. <laughs> I have my own personal reference ones and the ones that Don't are neat to give you like. I control. have the one I need. I, that's where the dying card went. I was missing a dying card and I went through it. I literally just assumed you had it and didn't bother to look. <laughs> <laughs> Rushing. All right. Thanks. Right, well, y'all take that one out there, and uh, I'll handle these. And uh, so Roshin's going to stride up to the edge. Uh, I'm assuming that these clumsy things aren't going to be agile enough to, to attack of opportunity. Certainly be. not in the Good. attack of opportunity. <laughs> Good to right. know. They are. Um, and uh, so ad ad advance in, uh, make a slash with my uh, sword at the um, uh, for the hasted uh, action at the uh, Higgums right there. <laughs> Can we call him the Baconator? Uh, you know, now, I'm getting a little bit of a flashback of the the boars uh, that we destroyed like to in that? that little town. Uh, oh, I can't do it. You I, can't do it. Now. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I didn't see it. Sorry. And it's only when I'm defending. Um, so that's gonna get me a 34. 34 will hit. Oh, really? It's a big fat demon. So, okay. <laughs> again, not a defensive creature. This one. They just have a lot um, of help. And again, not terribly competent. It, it's not. Taking a ton of like tactical and intelligent efforts to defend itself. <gasps> they are it gluttons. He's kind of Just a huge pile of lard that is in front of you, getting a sword plunged into it. All right. Well, fair enough. Uh, well, uh, it's getting a sword plunged into it for let's see, 12, 13, 14, 22 good and slashing damage. Oh, he ain't gonna like that too much. Hi, Porkins. Like he won't like that good damage very much, I don't think. I don't think he will. Uh, mm. He does not know. How much was the total? 22. 22? That, really? Just just 22? That's what you That's said. That's what I said, right? That's what okay. I said, yeah. <laughs> Whatever I said. I'm going to add. I mean, clearly, you As can soon see, as I said it, my memory immediately erased it to make room also. for more stuff. Happen, uh, happens to me literally all the time. They, uh, You would also see, much as you have throughout so much of this uh, pyramid, the holy energy from your sword searing through this demon's flesh. It squeals and recoils in pain. Um, well, that seemed to work really well, and I did not roll particularly high, so I'm going to swing at it again. Oh, that's a 19. It's a 19 on the die, drops to a 14, 42. That'll hit. Good damage weakness. Uh, let's see, 9, 11, 13, uh, 21. 13, yeah, 21, okay. more good and slashing damage. All right, another solid strike there. Um, and then just glance down at the triad member there. It's like, you picked the wrong one and scared to death. <laughs> Okie dokie, intimidate. Pretty good. Uh, that's gonna be uh, 47. 47 is a regular success. He's frightened too. Frightened dose on the guy nearest. Uh, well, seeing you kind of rip apart this big ugly demon's probably gonna do that realistically. I smell frightened. It's a demon machine. Um, and that's, is everything question mark? With your haste? Uh, yeah, yep. that's all four actions. Okay. Move, slap, slap, scare. So, um, this guy you just frightened here nearest. So you are you are in the room now at this ledge. He is going to uh, sort of scramble back, draw, uh, pick up a bow rather that's just sort of near the uh, leaned against the shelf near him, pick that up, and then uh, take a running move back. Uh, keeping this sort of overhang a little bit above him as he moves counterclockwise around this, about up to the extreme east of the room, a little past 
um, raising the bow, drawing an arrow as he takes his run to fire a shot up at you. Clearly a bit rushed, clearly a bit stressed, clearly a bit frightened too. Uh, <laughs> reactive shield. Uh, so reactive shield, you pop your shield up with a, so it's going to be minus two. A 46 to faint you. Popping your shield up a bit early and then kind of surprised by hearing no arrow, shift it a bit to look right as the shot comes through. Okay. It's going to be flat-footed. All righty. Um, actually, um, I predict such a thing because I'm under the effect of foresight, and I am not fooled. You ain't fooled. Is that just blank carte blanche immunity to the flat-footed condition? Uh, let's see here. Uh, plus two initiative. I am not flat-footed against undetected creatures or when flanked. Not necessarily when fainted. Yeah, actually, fainted. never mind. Yeah, I'm, yeah, like, I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure there's about nothing in Pathfinder 2 that makes you immune to being fainted. That's like the thing that applies flat-footed directly. That would have been an It's a level nine spell. Yeah, no, that's what I was like. That would be an interesting <laughs> knowledge if it was. Uh, but taking this shot, he can uh, he can faint the level nine magic. That's I good see that. Yeah, no, that's pretty good. Uh, going to lose a shot for a thirty-nine against your flat-footed. Uh, thirty-nine against my flat-footed is minus two, right? Yes. Just hits me. Uh, well, I thought you were going to just, just even, hits even with that. Just with even with defense. that. Oh. And defensive and reactive shield? Yeah, I'm still at minus one AC from um, moderate curse. So. Oh, um. yeah. The, the plus ones. The plus ones, yep. man, they happen. We tried. We tried so hard. He was at minus two, and we have this, and I have, yeah, and it's all worked out. We tried so hard and got It's a lot so better far. than in first edition where it's like minus five, plus four, plus three. This stacks, this doesn't. Uh, shield block that. reaction. Wow, that was a high roll. That was a very high roll. That's uh, going to be 42 points of piercing damage. Minus 4. Okay, so 42 minus 4 is 38. Minus 15 hardness is 23. So. And with picking up the bow, that was what he said. What he had. Uh, the one nearer the back is going to grab his bow as well. Uh, and then you see there is a matching staircase on the far end of the room with a door set atop it as well. He is going to... Uh, Draw his bow off of his back, rush up those stairs, uh, and similarly loose an arrow your direction. This one, not a feared, is. Go ahead and reroll that. Thank you, foresight. Okay. Uh, so it'll be a four on the deception check to faint you instead of a ten. Uh, thirty-three to faint you. Uh, no, DC thirty-five. Then you are not flat-footed. It made a difference to the ensuing shot. Which is only going to be a 42. Uh, 42 still be, beat my AC by one. <laughs> no, uh, it's too hard. The previous th- three on the previous thing. Uh, but not flat footed for what that matters. That's if good. He has that, that's attack. very, very matters. Just taking a normal arrow while you're able to block it traditionally is going to be a large difference. Um, it's going to be 19 points of piercing damage. Significantly <laughs> Big better. difference not so being flat footed. 15. It's like me not getting. All of those dice. Yeah. Marshall. Yeah. Well, I told you, you'd have plenty of room. This is true. My girl. That's right. Well, it's been a minute since I've done this. Trishik, you help Roshane. I'll take care of this one. Mega hey, Marshall hey, time. Hey, dun, hey. dun, 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 dun. <laughs> He just starts singing that. Singing his own theme song in the hallways. He gets <laughs> real Mr. He Marshall. He to the beat. <laughs> Mr. Marshall, you're making, you're making a great bard. He's just big. I hate out with the bard a lot, so it's only appropriate. Disgusting pig thing now. You are my advisor. Imagine I don't know. if I'm... becoming huge was a bard spell. You just... Dun, 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 dun. I don't know which one of them smells worse. <laughs> the pig. There are way more ridiculous bard spells than that. I'll have you Yeah, know. but it'd be true. funny. Yeah. Do you not remember Mr. Stuskleis? Yeah, da, 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 da. Now there's a wall. <laughs> that's, that's fair. And, uh... Never mind. As Marshall becomes Mega Marshall, you know, his giant dwarven hybrided fire titan thing going on, he's going to spook to death the big piggy demon. Remus a big piggy demon. Give me some intimidate. That is a 19 on the die, sir. So that is a 49. Yeah, 49 is going to critically succeed. Biggest so... piggest... Fortitude save us. Imagine mm-hmm. growing huge, scaring the pig to death, and now you can't participate in the rest of the fight. <laughs> <laughs> what? Because he can't fit through the door. I could make a new door. I'm saying if the pig no. died. And oh, because then... he can't get in the room. Yeah. The of... <laughs> he literally can't. He can't get in the room. the door. <laughs> That's we not learned that Marshall can just make new doors? I mean, we, oh, we can also please, just... Please roll a one on this fourth save. Um, That... 
I mean, his will's not good. He's definitely... It's a fort save, right? Yeah, it's a fort or save. A, oh, it's a fort save. His fort is better, but... Yeah. It's a fort save to not instantly 34? die. 34? I don't think that's, that's a 34? fail. 34? That's a fail. Yeah, that's that's a not fail. Gonna do it. That is a regular fail. Well, it's dead. a regular fail. But yeah. He, yeah critical, critical fail is dead. And re oh, he has to critically succeed and critically fail? Yes. Are you sure? Uh, look, give me one second. I will, works. Hold on. That's what assassinate hold, is. Hold on. Give, give, well, give, give me just also a moment. False. I will pull <laughs> up the ability. critically fail to die. <clears throat> All right. So I'm pretty if sure it's just too. a failure. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. Uh, will DC. Oh, no. It is 16. I'm pretty sure he's dead. Attempt an intimidation check against the will DC of the living creature within 30 feet of you that you sense to observe. Uh, if the target can't hear her, blah, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah he's, de he's, he's dead. dead. He falls yeah, he's dead. We got him. Oh, he's dead. Uh, so, yeah, Marshall. That is way better than I thought it was. Yep. So, and as you squeal back at him, <laughs> this thing has a heart attack and dies. <laughs> well, that was a good fight. I'm you participated for one round. <laughs> Raw. Marshall's hey. having fun. And Did that seriously work? <laughs> You know. You should have tried. <laughs> I thought the little guy tried. would be the easier one. <laughs> In all fairness, I'm bigger. So, uh, upon that, That's since so I'm so like, so well, so since problem A is done, Marshall's going to turn around, and since he's clearly too big for the door, he's going to do an athletics check to make a new door. All right, maybe an athletics check. Don't break the str Oh, no. Minus five, I would presume. Or no, wait. No, I it's just even... a break check. It yep, never mind. That's a 17. Uh, I'm legendary in athletics, dice. so uh, yeah, the Draugr die is, is totally redeeming me right now. That is a total of a 48. A 48. The Plus frame of this door is, that doesn't matter. Frame of this door okay. is uh, stone and reinforced, but this is very much the thinnest point of it where it intersects with this chamber around this weird central laboratory. And pushing on both sides of it, you buckle the stone inward. Uh, widening this opening. Yeah, to Marshall be... just puts the full weight of his body, shoulder, and like everything else into the doorway and just pulls a Kool Aid <laughs> man. <laughs> and you just crush it to be about 10, 12 feet wide now. Mr. Rizzo, that can't be good. Oh, structural that's integrity. Not good. Uh, but I liked that door. I don't. Raw. So you, just... you didn't even have to move to do that. There's just. No, you got reach. His reach. She's got yeah, reach. She's gigantic. Gigantic. I have 15 foot reach. Oof. <laughs> Teleported you into the room. Well, yes, Marshall. I have all the room I need to sneak up and slap the pigums. You're welcome. So I'm healthy. I'm gonna. Yeah, you <laughs> killed a guy by yourself. That's great. One v one. And I didn't even. That's need not my a axe. one. I rolled a four. So I sneak up to the door. I slap a pigums. When you reach in through, I kind of just. Yeah. So it's a large door now. Yeah, it's a huge door now. Huge door. It's gonna compromise. Wait, you have to hide first. I'm out of sight from him. Now with this giant gaping door hole anymore, <laughs> you can kind of see all this. I was gonna take a hide and a sneak to get up there. That's fair. So I rolled a 16 for the attack. I'm saving that for later. <laughs> I'm painting that. I'm hidden. What do you get? That's a 20, I'm pretty sure. That's a 10. Okay. That's a 10. I'm still probably hidden. Oh, if you got a natural 20, you're definitely yeah, hidden. That's a 40. Uh, 40 is still going to be pretty hidden, yeah. And then a 16, so a 46 to hit him flat-footed. Um, Sneaky beaky. 46 on his flat foot. That's a critical hit. Uh, he's chaotic. I'm not even going to bother. <laughs> You don't know it's a gluttony. Nine. Demon. There's <laughs> laws. Yeah, it's chaotic. There's though. laws <laughs> to be in a gluttony. 16, 17, 23. You hand them the list of laws and they just eat it. 52. 52 points of damage. All right. Reyes. Well, this is going a lot better than I thought it would. Um, <laughs> Sit, tell that to the pyramid. Oh, yeah. Besides Marshall, I mean, I expected that. There's That's in every calculation. Um, I mean, I helped, didn't I? No, not you at all. You did great, Marshall. Don't listen to him. We could have just teleported you in the room, but that's beside the point. Um, This goes down. I'm going to fly up to the ceiling of this. How tall are the ceilings in these halls? Uh, The hallway is probably about 15 feet tall. I'm going to fly. It's nearly square. I'm going to fly up to the top and just kind of put my feet on the ceiling and hang upside down because I have a cloak with a bat. Okay. <laughs> Um, oh, that's right, he does. Oh my god. I'm gonna be right. You got it so you could follow me. He's literally yeah. a flying rat. So I'm gonna be. 
right here. That way I'm in range of the demon and Roshin. You have a 10 foot stand. Ten. Yep. Um, and I'm going to cast Forbidding Ward on Roshin and the pig demon. No. Oh my god, a status bonus to AC. Yeah. Wait, Fair enough. isn't this already a status bonus to AC? It's better. It's better? Plus it's two. A two. Mm. Plus oh, it two. heightens. Yep. Look at that. Plus two. Recently, in fact. Mm-hmm. Six level. Mm-hmm. That's my entire... Da, 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 da. Ah. <laughs> All right, well, we have uh, one big, big ugly ones. demon left here, and as he sees everyone pushing through the door, he's Marshall really widen this. He sees Roshin in front of him, his shining battle maiden in armor, Rez, with these mighty paged wings unfurled behind him. His eyes kind of widen a bit. You see his snout just sort of twitch as he snuffles and snorts. <laughs> And uh, he doesn't immediately go to swing. His his fingers kind of wiggle. And mm-hmm. you can see a light flash in his eyes. And I need Raz to make me a reflex save. I don't like this. A natural 20. Woo! I need Roshin to <laughs> make Malachi. me a reflex save. Wait, where's my red die? It's right there. Honey. Thank you're, you. You're okay. It's fine. Uh, reflex save. Um, it's from him, right? From him. So Forbidden Ward works. Yep. So that's going to be uh, 43. Maybe another reflex save. For me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Same thing. 60 on the die, so that's 45 now. Uh, Marshall, maybe a reflex save. Oh, boy. Clumsy, too. Get plus one. I'm going to uh, rethink about how this is going to work. <laughs> And use this here. Rethink. He's thinking about reflexes. <laughs> really hard. Better, but not great. Uh, nine, so right? it's a plus one from that, right? So, yep. okay. So, uh, math 33. Well, the 33, um, you see this glint in his eyes turn to a flash as uh, pulses of a sort of wavering gilded light emanate out towards the three of you. Uh, Roshin and Rez are quick enough to dodge around the machine, two of them founding down almost like spotlights in front of you. Uh, but Marshall, busy pushing in the doorway here um, with the you have big red in your yeah. hand. This giant X is kind of busy with crushing. One of the lights comes through and doesn't hit him, but it hits big red. And big red starts to shine and sparkle and glow as if lit by a staged light in an opera play. And as it does, this uh, disgusting little creature here, disgusting big creature here, turns his face towards Marshall for a moment before squealing in anger and just slamming his tusks down towards Rasheen. You guys, you are the first thing in between him and there. It's like, oh, that's all it did? (laughs) Ah! (laughs) He clearly is trying to get through to Marshall. He wants big red. That's my axe now, boy. Oh, no. <laughs> and apparently... Won. Benny Hill theme. Da, 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 da. <laughs> 30, <laughs> uh, 35 to hit. Uh, 35 to hit. I mean, it's, uh, she sees it coming a mile. He telegraphs it so heavy. She just got... Oh, all right. It's coming. There it goes. Smash into the floor, sidestep. And uh, as we're kind of looking at this strange event happening... Each of you sort of uh, has vision of the doorway of the room here through this massive portal that Marshall has made. See the entire room shudder a bit as this glowing light from within the forge pulses more rapidly and with greater intensity before an ear-shattering peal of cracked metal as this forge in the center of the room is ramped into shards and pieces bursting from within spreading like petals of a flower as a massive, near room-filling gout of flames emerges from within, hovering in the space above the forge for a moment before giant wings unfurl, Uh near filling the chamber from room to room. Burb. It's it's, it's a burb? The triad agents in the room Look at this with about the same level of shock and fear as you guys do. (laughs) It is apparent they also did not expect this to happen. Huh. Marshall broke the room. And as this massive flaming bird unfurls its wings. Wonder where the fire from the forge came from. And lets loose 
a cry. A burst of fire fills the doorway uh, betwixt all of you currently fighting. Uh, it's going to be hitting Trishik, Roshin, and the Greed Demon. And I'm going to need a reflex save from each of the three of you. I'll reroll a four. Can I give you a reroll? Uh, it's it's not not turn. Turn. It is my turn. But I might as well keep it. You no, already used not. it on the deception check. Well, I was, oh, Your turn it's... hasn't started yet. Oh, this happens at the I end of the round. I might as well take it because I got another hero. You, oh, you did get another one. Oh, just and I got another one for yep. Marshall. Yeah. 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 Thank Put you. you back up. I love it. I'll need it. I don't feel like critically failing, actually. I'm going to take this uh, hero point. Thank you, Justinian, for that. Thank you, Justinian. Kind of, she just kind of like stares open out like, whoa, and then the fire. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> wait, this is bad. That's way that's better. significantly better. Uh, that's going to be a, let's see here, 45. A uh, 45. Beep, boop, boop, beep, beep. 45 will succeed. 34. 34. I rolled a four into a four. Doesn't critically fail. So I take half damage. You'll take half. Uh, Marshall? Oh, I didn't know I was supposed to make a save. Oh, not Marshall. Sorry. Um, Demon was Demon. the third one. Demon. The other, other, the other big, big thing. thing. Other big the thing. Other yeah. big thing. Look how pretty it is, though. It's it is beautiful. Ugly. It is a visit of frills. It is a beautiful bird. I don't want to fight it. Severin it pokes his head bird. up, and he gets this look of utter love and adoration in his eyes. Uh, big level burn you. It's a 37 and also regular fails. It's taking all of this. Um, and as this flame erupts, so half, half, all <laughs> to Demon Boy here. One deal. It's beautiful. It's what I've been waiting for all my little bird life. It's like Donkey and the Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> it's horrifying. Pretty sure that's a Phoenix. Trust me, darling. I think you might have had a moth for a familiar. I, um, she is really with, pretty. I keep. Uh, I'll. I'll be careful with that one, so Miss, it's Mr. Severin. Forty-five Severin. points of fire damage. Those of you with fire resistance will feel this sear with a divine wrath. You will only get half of your resistance against this. Ooh. Uh, so twenty-two to Trishik and Rasheen through half of your fire resistance. Okay. Forty-five to the big ugly demon. It was very upset and immediately wheels around with the rest of the group, now much belatedly, not until he gets exploded to look towards this giant it's phoenix. 45 to the demon? Yes. Yeah. Who failed? Who failed. Okay, so should I take half then? 45 is a total. I said 22 to each of you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Mr. Um, so the, the does I do anything in room? particular to myself or Marshall? I mean, I'm not in range. No. To myself. No. Or the demon. It does a bunch of fire damage. Okay, just because evil. No, it doesn't have any. Uh, I wasn't sure if it was good. It has no damage. like a line. No, it has no good damage or anything. Okay. Um, and this thing calls out in an almost musical voice. Tresta istori, tresta lipton mal. Does anyone speak celestial? <laughs> Res. <laughs> Nope. Rez would understand. I told you a story. I am free and you will burn. Who's a story? You're free. Hey, she's free. She's going to burn a story. If she's free, I'll take her out for a date. Not that kind of free. Oh. Like free from the confines Player of Player three has entered the game. Resme. <laughs> Seb, Seb. No, 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 no. She'll shove him back down into his bag as he tries to go Kentucky fly fried toward her. if he goes near <laughs> Uh, oh God. Um, I'll talk to the bird. Okay. Um, Resme starts to think very, very quickly. Um, and she will get a little bit closer to the door so she can at least see in the room. Okay. I think I mean, you gotta be You can see just like fine. Five feet. You can see who the giant chasm marshal is made, Harry. Yeah, but I can't actually do anything. All that right. That is typically cool. the problem in large engagements. Um, Fireball. She will get in there okay. and she will use her second uh, util utilization of her invisibility. Okay. So you're striding into the room? Uh, I'm going invisible first. Okay. Um, then I'm going to go into the room. You gonna sneak into the room? I'm going to sneak into the, into the room. What's your speed? Uh, my speed is 35. 
You can get like just in the door with this. Okay, that's sneak fine. Is half speed. That's all I need. Yeah. Um, roll me a stealth check. And then Roisin. Regardless of what happens there, it's going to be Roisin's turn. Okay. It's going to be a... It's around the front page. Okay. 43. Okay. All right. Um, what if he beats my perception, so I don't know if she's there. <laughs> you don't see a sneak by. Um, so uh, first things first... Um, I I don't know what you're about, but I don't really want to be fighting with that. You, on the other hand, um, <laughs> uh, scared to death the demon. <laughs> let's see. Go for it. That's only an eight. Probably not. Uh, what's that going to be? A 42. Um, 42 on big, ugly demon is a regular success. Frightened two. Frightened two. That's still... That's right money. Right Sets him up for me. Uh, let's uh, hit it with a sword. Uh, it's a third. Do I have status bonuses? I don't have any status bonuses to attack. Uh, it's a 38. Uh, 38 will hit. Hitting uh, them is not the hard part. No, it is not. 9, uh, 13, 21. Man, I'm really good at rolling 21. You uh, got flashing this. Flashing and good. The point is the good weakness. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, that true. is definitely searing him. He is um, not happy about that, but he is a very large lad, and uh, the strikes he's landed against him so far, even with this uh, scorching fire from the phoenix, are not, there's not a ton <laughs> to him. Trigger searing light, spell oh, storing rune. That could do it, that, that, that'll definitely end. Um, oh wow, I rolled Oh, 20. that is awesome. All right, so does he take fire damage? Yes. Okay, uh, so that's going yeah, he just to got be blown up by fire. 24 fire damage. And he's a fiend, I'm assuming. Oh yeah. my god, Nick almost mathed. Yeah. Hey. Now you know how uh, I feel 26 all the time. good damage. Okay. Do you have a token for the phoenix? Oh yes, I do. I don't have an actual token for the phoenix because it is like beyond the size category that has tokens. So here's a big spicy boy. This is a big there. boy. Big boy. It's close enough. Close um, enough. Right, yeah, the bird didn't have one either because uh, he was also going to We could just put Severn on the table. <laughs> Severn would love to be on the table right now. All right, that's one action, Roisin. Uh, second action is let's hit him again. Quick hit. Is that your uh, haste it? The first one was my haste it. Oh. Uh, that's uh, going to drop down to a, it's going to be four less. So 39. Wait, are you getting them with the wombo combo? <laughs> I had to drop the shield for that. I figure I might uh, need dude, it. that ain't Falco. A lot of stuff. There's still the two archers in the back, too. Yeah. That's fair. Who are up next? Uh, 28 slashing and good. Okay. I could get those if you want. <laughs> uh, yeah, go for it, man. <laughs> Just keep the pig away from All the right. next. <laughs> uh, and uh, final action. Um, right. I don't really feel like dealing with that. So I'm going to actually back out of the room. <laughs> That's not my problem, but uh, so just a twenty foot move. I'm just gonna say, you know what? I'd say we probably let the uh, we let that fiery bird go and handle all the rest of that. It clearly has made no effort to uh, not hit the triad forces, and uh, the archer in the back of the room, at least, has definitely moved his aim up to this giant thing in the middle of the room. They're gonna um, piss off a phoenix. And as they go, the one on the eastern end, as you're retreating, uh, is going to loose some shots into the doorway. Uh, Trashik now being the most obvious target as he circles around a, a, a little bit further back. They get little short bows. They're not long, so you're reaching the end of his range of engagement. He, he only moves maybe about 10 feet further back uh, before Nimble definitely die. failing to faint uh, with a two on the die yeah. and then firing a shot towards Trashik. Nimbly dodges. 53 to hit. That'll crit. Not flat, really good. You're not flat footed for that one. Good job. Not <laughs> flat footed on the crit is, or flat footed on the crit was a Was that a 19? It was a 19, yes. Ouch. Have you done the math by this mm -hmm. point on their attack modifier? <laughs> you got there. And that's not the one, that's just the, uh, it would be one less. If it's 52 matter, because he's actually still frightened one. No. Okay. Uh, 37, 39, 40. So it's going to be 34 points of piercing damage. Total? No sneak attack dice. No sneak attack dice. I just expected the crit to be a little higher than that. A, he hit him for like he hit Nick for like nineteen last turn. Yeah, that's right. Um, and then fire a second shot at you, but like clearly, kind of turning his attention 
uh, back and forth this Phoenix. He is a uh, little concerned about the state of things, and that's going to show. That second shot's going to be a 34. Um, Just whizzes past my head. But that first one, he loosed out at you as it kind of settles a bit, and the guy in the back readies his shots, making me a fortitude save. It's always you who just happens to get the poison arrow. Reroll. You do get a plus one to it. Yeah, but that was a five. Oh, I'm sorry. That's why I'm rerolling it. That's that's an eighteen. This Ooh. dice is really hard to read. Yeah, it might be easy. So let's see, twenty six, thirty four, forty four, forty five. Yeah, you're gonna be fine on that one. You uh, perhaps took some preparations after the last time. You kind of saw, you started chugging out a some, bit so I was what, tolerant. What, what they're dealing? Uh, the one in the back. You are going to see loose better. a pair of arrows up towards this uh, gigantic flaming bird. Are they going to burn up in the atmosphere before Which it are gets to the bird? Which are both just hilarious misses. This dude is terrifying. A, a three and a nat one on his two shots. He's, uh, he's, just, he's just shooting up. The heat they are, wave knocked the arrows yeah, away. It's literally enough heat rating off, rating off, this, off of this bird to completely throw the shots wide. Um, and they just turned to cinders, uh, shooting within even a couple of feet of this thing's wingspan as he fires up. The one in the back just panic firing at this creature. Uh, you see some little droplets of his poisoned arrow just go spraying into a vampire agent as he shoots. Um, Marshall, as we come around to you, you see Big Red sort of glow and shimmer again, illuminated even somehow more than the flames of this bird in the center of the chamber. You feel a sickening presence overcome you. You are sickened two and slowed one. Mm. Ooh. Ooh. And Big Red is so physically disgusting to you, you can barely stand to wield it, is the source of this condition. Oh. Well, that's not fun. <sighs> I hate to do this. Free action, drop big red. Drops beautiful axe to the ground. <laughs> I wouldn't drop that on the table. <laughs> <laughs> Chunk. No. Oh, well, there uh, goes our table. As uh, you drop it, you are immediately no longer sickened. Uh, that condition resolves immediately. You still are going to be, because slow is the beginning of your turn, you're still kind of recovering, so that's still like, only going to have two actions, but the sickened stops the second okay. to let go of the axe. So I'm, so I'm slowed one still. Yep, okay. so you still only have two actions this turn. Okay. Well... Despite dropping big red, I think I'm in range of the, the first archer. For uh, To move in and rush him? No, I'm going to do another scare to death. Uh, you can't see him. He's... You are way yeah, out. Too far? Yeah, he's, he's way too far. way back. You need to go in the room for sure. That's a 30-foot range. And he's Actually, like you know what? This is what I'll do goes. instead. Um, yeah, I, I thought I had enough room, but I guess not. You can scare to death the other demon. Yeah, you haven't tried to scare you that haven't one scared yet. that demon yet. Well, it's frightened already, so when it's frightened, it doesn't work. <laughs> no, when it's frightened, it's, it, it makes absolutely it the opposite of how that works. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> oh no, I thought it was a. If you had text. frightened him, it wouldn't work. Because oh, oh okay. Okay, yeah. that, that makes just sense. means it's more likely that yours works. You know what? That makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, so yeah, I will go ahead and scare the death, the other pig demon. It's actually better because both of you have it. Yeah, you can that is kind of. We, we, we roll double run off each other so. run off each other here with the frightened we, stack. <laughs> we roll double digits here you think we're uh, sheen scary wait till you see the giant oh yeah that's way better hand uh, that down to Trishik that is a grand total of 43 the Stenian 9 43 oh. yes there we go. 43 mm. and he's frightened just critically succeed teamwork he did it Fail the save. Will save. Fort save. Fail the save. Fail the save. Fail the save. Fail the save. Sorry. No, fort save difficulty, the intimidate DC. So it's a huge DC. Yeah, scared to death is against their... 39 with the frightened two. Nope. Fail. I am sure it doesn't. Uh, wait, it's your intimidate DC. Intimidate, it's not your class DC. Holy crap, DC. it actually does. My intimidate DC. My intimidate it's not DC class DC. Is... And this, yeah, that was class DC. This little flapping porker here, after he takes these hits and gets burned, he strikes Rasheen, looks towards oh, Marshall. You'd look good. Okay, so tigers. Marshall literally looks at it, go, <laughs> drops it, drops Big Red. It's like, how dare you taint Big Red. And just erupts in a roar, and he has a heart attack and dies. Yeah, uh, messing with 
Perhaps the mistake that you can identify this demon has made here. I'm going yeah, to imagine. I don't want to do that one. <laughs> uh, I'm going to imagine the weapon is still in infected for now. Uh, it is still, I believe. Let me look. It is still lit up. It is still glimmering. Yes. Okay. Does well, that apply to everyone? What? Everyone. Like what? looking at the weapon, it, like you can all see nasty, it's glimmering. But uh, it looks. You nasty. can also see that Raz's armor. Roshin's sword and shield are glimmering as well, but they don't seem to be as effective. The, the glow is very muted. Okay. Uh, ah, for my last action... Dodge most of it. Uh, for my last action... Well, I have a backup weapon for a reason. I pull out Boomy. I thought you were going to run in like catch his hand. <laughs> <laughs> Start punching. True chic. So, everybody knows what a phoenix is. Uh, I don't know. You don't know anything about it, but I'm sure this is a, feel like a thing stories are told of. She's probably... I don't know it anything not, about it. It would be a reasonable assumption that in-game, Trishik perhaps would have heard a tale of a phoenix at some point. They would be literally the same tier of creatures of legend that they are in real life. Yeah. As they are that unheard of, like, as a thing that you would not even possibly have believed was real until you see this. Hell, exactly. Oh, well, I don't think the how matters. It does matter. I'm not going to fight that. Don't I've fight heard it. what they can do. Just... Uh, you've heard stories? I think the wizard stuck it in the farge. <laughs> you just build paper tap on your back. <laughs> There's stories. Research. <laughs> I'm gonna... Reads frantically. I'm gonna, Eat <laughs> I'm gonna it. put the stories on the ground. <laughs> And I'm gonna draw my bow, and <laughs> I'm going to um, hide. Okay. Please no. So <laughs> that's a twelve, so forty-two. Okay. And I can see both of the scarlet triads. Yes, they're like fifty and eighty feet away from me, but you can see them. For now, I'm going to sneak into the room to the far, like, on the south wall, 30 feet. Okay. Rather, so the opposite direction from them. Yeah. That's a 13. Okay. I'm sneaking. Yeah, you And that's three actions. All right, Raz. Um, <laughs> give me my research back. <laughs> <laughs> I want to move into the room and attempt to actually talk to the phoenix because if I can get it on our side... I'm not worried. Hey, Treadle. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, bird. Hello, <laughs> Mr. Phoenix. Have you considered not? <laughs> we freed you, I think. I think that's how that worked. So that is... On um, purpose. We freed you on purpose? Totally on purpose. All planned. 100% planned. Uh, so as you move in and you start to plead with this, uh, as Trishik is retreating and arrows are flying and battle is happening all around you, uh, in six seconds That's... of a combat, you can I mean, start pleading with them. You, you can roll me a diplomacy like... check. Not us. Not us. I can roll you a diplomacy check, and I speak its language. This is important. You speak celestial. That is important. Um, you know what? If I have a, there was one. I have a stack of these. Oh. I'm also using his Malachite. Dude, so in, in the tray. Swingy. In the tray. In the tray. Oh, yeah. This is when it rolls bad. No, it's 18. an 18, B. Um, That's pretty good. I mean, diplomacy ain't true. 42. Uh, you start to speak with it here, and you're going to use like a two actions trying to speak with it as you can. And uh, as the arrows fly, this thing kind of pivots to uh, assess the room. Uh, you see its neck turn uh, thin and long, almost kind of like a swan or a peacock with a plume of flame shooting back from behind its head, uh, smoldering up into the air above it. It looks both directions and turns back to the door to see this hugely corpulent demon just kind of hit the edge of this walkway and just flab down into a heap on the pit below, uh, even horizontal, it rising up above the eight-foot walkway with a girth of its stomach. And uh, it Hell continues to rage in celestial... You think me a fool, minions of a story, that I don't see even now your sorceress is sneaking invisible to work their woes? I will not be contained! And it starts to swirl around the room, um, flying in, in a room that is clearly like a cage way too small for this bird. And it's almost just circling 
uh, spinning, kicking up a searing <laughs> cyclical wind uh, Wait, that blasts sorceress. throughout the chamber. Oh gosh, resume. <laughs> I need everybody, Marshall, you are in range of this, oh, dear. to make me a reflex save. Uh, oh. Roshin as well? Yeah, you are also in range of this, okay. yes. If you're within 20 feet of the room, you're in range. I wasn't safe from As where the I wind was. blasts out through this massive I'm doorway as well. I'm afraid to ask this, but does this provoke? Uh, I do it is, a, I do it is flying weapon. past you. It does provoke, absolutely. I might you, as well. Uh, Marshall With takes a, a punch. Hammer. Oh, you have Boomer. boomer. Yeah, you can I, told, I did yell out Marshall not to attack the Phoenix. And Marshall uh, attacks the Phoenix. And Marshall does attack the <laughs> I rolled a five anyway, so I doubt that does anything. He takes a swing, his hammer... Uh, smashing through some of the flaming feathers of this wing, uh, strangely harmlessly. Uh, now for my reflex save. I'm gonna just start rolling this stuff. 42. Uh... Malachi protect? Yeah. Uh, Don't forget, you still get this, yep, too. Yep, I did. It helps, it helps. So it's only a minus one. Um... Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Angry verb. Okay. I think I got it. Res. Ah, I lost my math completely. 42. That's the regular success, Roshin. Uh, 36. Regular failure, Resume. 43. Regular success, Rashid. 38. Regular failure. Half damage. Um, Marshall. 46. Regular success. Um, Not a fail. I rolled a 19. It is 49 points of fire damage. Do we get our normal resistance? Get your normal fire resistance to oh, this. Yeah. This is just the blasting heat emanating out from this thing as it sails around okay. around. Is that full or <laughs> half? the entire map. 49 is the hell, is the full. Oh, okay, uh, so. I'm not, you, you know if you took half or not. So I'm, just, uh, I'm just gonna say the damage uh, things do. That's for fine. So, uh, these two 20, lads got it, 14. are here. 14, that's what I took. Yeah. I took 20. Um, the one the farthest in the back critically succeeds takes nothing. Um, the one a little closer, you've already dealt some damage to, is going to fail, uh, going to regular fail as well. Support me, please. As this thing's swirling around, it ends back in the center of the room, still flying uh, some 20 feet up against this forge. It, it's wingspan filling much of the chamber, uh, swelling in the center of this room uh, in rage as this fire blast in every direction. You see the one try guy in the back is far enough back. He kind of hits the floor. It washes over him. He looks around mostly okay. The other one taking the blast as badly as some of you did. Resume. Uh, I'm off the map. Oh. Resume? Oh, Rez. Last hero point from Justinian 9. Use it wisely. Um, how... Thick? Do I think those walls are? Well, the one adjacent to the doorway was. No, no, I meant the like wall to get out inches. of the pyramid. I don't understand. Aren't we like, underground? We're oh, underground. You are How two levels up. underground. Yeah, that's what I mean. Is it straight up. Yeah. You, for what purpose? Like, if I wanted to try to disintegrate the ceiling to try to give no. it away you are out. Two stories that's underground. That's what I thought. Yeah, no, no, no. There is no chance <laughs> you could disintegrate a whole. You could disintegrate a whole person. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we still have the archers to deal with. You have to disintegrate a whole person. That's true. You have about enough magic to disintegrate what you approximately feel is the volume of a human male. <laughs> I'll bet you All she right. can disintegrate that entire corpse of that gluttony demon. It's impressive um, how that magic works. I know, right? It is a good corpse. So I will drop in this. Okay. Um, that's an action to dismiss. That's fine. Um... And I will look at it. I don't speak celestial, um, but I'm. You have also, no idea what it's saying. But I'm also going to bet that it might know Elven, because that was a pretty, you know, common thing, and it's pretty old. Hey, I'm an elf. Don't kill me. Um, <laughs> I really, I, I have so many questions about the elven lore we've established on Two Perception. Like there's, there's the elven diplomacy. I, I, I really feel like we have just put together that Keonan is functionally like the bad parts of Detroit. It is. Because it totally not is. Not only do we have elven diplomacy, 
we have the elf, the half elf now here coming in the room, seeing this giant majestic firebird speaking in the language of angels. And she's like, I bet that speaks English. <laughs> it does speak English. It lives in America. <laughs> speak your elfin at it, Resume. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Uh, what happened to our elf cannon? What, how did we go so wrong? <laughs> Halflings are birds. Uh, <laughs> we have established many very odd things. She will look at it and say, we have absolutely no desire to hurt you, fight you, or interact with you at all. You are free. Please leave, go back out into the world and do what you will. We just want to leave this room. Are you doing what Rez is doing? Yeah, diplo yeah diplomacy. Well? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it has no clue what you're saying, Rasheen. Got it. Um, <laughs> Got it. Doesn't speak Elven. Hey, Mr. Rez, I don't think it speaks Elven. Yeah, like, figure that one out. Bruce. I got eight more. You seem to kind of get its attention, but it does not linger on you at all. And it, it's still speaking. It does not. It's not. All right. So Roshin is going to stride back into the room and then spend the rest of her action shoving Resme out of the room. <laughs> Smart. No. Stop. What is wrong with you? Please. Get it through your head. This is dangerous. <laughs> shove, shove, shove. <laughs> Raz what is it, Phoenix? We're going to have such a good time. Raz just clinging to the wall and that's sort of 15 feet up. 36. What's your, what's your fort, do you see? That makes it my fort. 35. 35. You have pushed Resume a bit out of the room. But it's a Phoenix. I have two more actions. I've never seen Oh, you're before. hasted, right? Shove, okay, shove, you, you pushed Resume five feet back out there. You push her through the hole. Yeah, I push her through the hole. Oh, uh, the rest of your actions? Yes, all you of can, them. I'll let you just push her. Three times with that. I'm gonna okay. be able three of them. Sure. Can you push follow her 15 me? feet. I, well, sir, uh, the, I couldn't push well, yeah, her. She couldn't, she did. She's just shoving you out. Um, in the room, the one just archer who survived the these shots, again, is just going to continue loosing arrows up towards this phoenix, um, attempting to feint and fire. The triad are just so devoted. Continue to, their to work. fire. Uh, they as to talk to the phoenix. They move to kind of posture towards this uh, door at the northern end of the room. Um, the later of this one shots, the, the last one he loses, is actually going to hit into the breast of this flaming beast. And you will see the arrow land. And although the shaft and the fletching is incinerated on impact near immediately, you actually see it hit. And you do see it lodge into this phoenix. He does start to deal damage on it as he continues to oh, fight here. Well, hey. look at that. <laughs> Got so many hero points. Oh, they're coming in, in now. We Everyone's coming. It's the it's the penultimate episode. We and this is a big scary bird. Thank you very Destronet's much. Destronet's got Marshall and Roshin. Everyone's been saving up for Thank such you. a moment. We will use them. Um, the other one, seeing Raz up in the room, speaking with it, over the celestial shouting of this phoenix, you can't really hear him say something to the other archer near with him, uh, before he knocks another arrow and just continues to attempt to track his shots on... Are you sneaking, Trisha? You can't usually does not see you. So I think trying to land shots on this weird little rat who, as far as he can tell, he also does not speak celestial, is attempting to command this giant phoenix against them. I am, actually. I mean, that is actually, that's, that's, that's actually what's happening. Right? He doesn't... He can't understand you, but, I mean, his assumption is... It's like... It's fine. I put myself in this position. Take a shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, he assumed he's, the worst and happened to be accurate. He assumed the worst, and this time you know he's right. Um, thirty-six deception. Deception. What's that deception, again? Uh, perception. Perception. DC. perception. I actually don't know if that succeeds on you. Is your um, perception higher than twenty-six? My perception is twenty-six. That exactly succeeds. And I don't think this helps him. That saves. Yeah, saves. Yeah, saves. it's yep. just a. Yeah, no, so fainted. He is going to lose a shot. You do get uh, damage resistance yeah. from that, though. Yeah. Do you think it speaks bird? 47 against your flat footed? Um. He's gonna burn 47, so I get plus. I'm it's a crit. It Just like, a crit. A good one? Exactly a crit. Exactly, so many minus exact two lethals plus one. in this yep. fight. As he moves 10 feet closer around the ring to Raz, uh, trying to at least deal with one threat here. Um, and he's going to, as Raz is pleading to this Phoenix, and, this, and what you can all tell is the same tongue, even if none of you have any idea what he's saying. Uh, his tone is clear enough that you get the same message as Scarlet Triad member does. And he takes the opportunity to land a beautiful shot on Raz. All right, gonna knock this down to zero. <laughs> Here's that dying part. You better not. I'm not gonna help you this time. 
Matt is spell slot? 89 points of piercing mm -hmm, damage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. No, he's not okay. No, I'm actually not okay, but I'm not down. And he's going to follow that up with a second arrow, trying to dispatch you as for you to quickly reconsider. as possible. 48, not on your flat-footed. 48, not on my... is a regular hit. Because of the defense? Yeah. Easy. You're not... You lingered. You hit it with the lingered. Yeah. 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 yeah, I lingered oh. it. Oh, you lucky boy. The plus boy. ones. The plus ones. You lucky boy. So. 15 points of piercing damage. Cool. The variance oh. on sneak attack versus not sneak attack is hilarious. Mm -hmm. And then he calls uh, back to his ally closer. Now you can hear him call out, You handle the bard. I'll get the heroes of reach hill. <laughs> <laughs> they use the name. Very confident in himself. Marshall, you appear to be retreating. Uh, I mean... Yeah, from them. We're totally retreating from them. Hey, so he's got us on the run. retreating from the room where they're fighting you. <laughs> this guy's here to pick up the dub this today. Marshall. So I'm still slowed one, correct? No, you are no longer slowed one. Oh, that makes things so much. Yeah, I mean, it's at the start of your turn. You're not holding the axe anymore, so it doesn't apply again. All right. You're so, completely recovered. So fist tonight. fight the bird. He does the, he is no, me. I'm going but to do could. a smart thing. I'm going to Blink. move up through the giant... Wall that I made, or the hole I mean. The hole you made would be the it's door. It's still at the door. The door is just much larger. I'm just now. moving a little bit closer. Right. Yeah. At least like. Move like in onto the landing? Onto the landing. Okay. At least yeah, you to can where get, like... I can be a little bit more like I can see more into the room. Hmm? But most importantly, be closer to Raz, old buddy. You're who... pretty much right like under, like Raz is like floating yeah. at like forehead level, basically. Yeah. It still matters. And. <sighs> Raz. Battle potato. Oh, I thought you were gonna use the throw an ally. Take thing. some arrows, and you just you see a giant hand. You see a gigantic hand holding a potato, pinching the tiniest little potato. Just rat nibble on. Come around and just. <laughs> that is a uh, thirty-seven on the medicine check. So uh, crit succeeds. Forty-eight plus ten. Wee. Health. Help. Help. I'm helping. Did I really just roll two ones on? Yeah, these? but you get two more. Yeah, that's true. So that's two. Do me a favor and go smash. Okay, that's guys. better. So that's 22 more hit points left. Oh, they Ooh. have one action left, I believe. Yep. Uh, this is complicated because I almost never use one-handed weapons. Yeah, Boomy's one-handed. You lose a lot of your damage here. Is this the Dwarven Thrower? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, fair enough. That's, that's why he's Boomy. He comes back. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, he, he Marshall is going to take a big wind up and swing at the one in, uh, archer in front of him. He's going to fling it? Yep. Ranged attack. That's so the dexterity. difference, nope. The, yeah. Dwarven thrower lets me use my strength on damage. On damage. Yeah. Yep. So this is you gotta hit. It him. has the throne joint. Yeah. yeah so sure. You gotta hit him. You gotta hit him first. That's well, yeah, dex. I know. So, so dex, the difference, uh, it's gonna be your normal attack roll, with whatever the difference between your strength and dexterity is, plus your clumsiness. So well, like if you're, so it's gonna be three lower than you your don't get attack, strength to hit. You get strength to damage. You don't hit them with how oh. hard you can throw the hammer. <laughs> you you hit them with hitting them with the hammer. So you still it, have to aim it, which is dexterity. Yeah. So if you're dex do, do you do you have the throw the thrower on your sheet? Did, did it not load it on yeah. the sheet? It didn't load it on the sheet properly, but give me one second. And is it guys. because you tried to put it in, you want it in melee, and that's the properly that you're trying to look Well, for? I, I literally oh. put clicked on Dwarven Thrower in the, uh, in the thing, and that's how it printed Throw, off. It's yeah, gonna it be, is a melee weapon. It's oh, gonna be, I see. Uh, it's going to be exactly your regular you're... attack. Just minus, minus three. Minus three. Two for clumsy, one for the difference in your strength and your dicks. Okay. Yeah. JT. Just okay. roll. Minus three. three. Regular attack. Three lower. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm just making sure that there's nothing. That, that it's not, nothing you can okay. read there is that important. Just make your regular attack three lower. Well, it's still an attack. So that's going to be 39 to hit. That is exactly as they see. Mm -hmm. Good job. It now, matters. So, so the you, damage is going to be a little different. It's going to be a lot different. You lose uh, your giant barbarian bonus rage but I do have. You get your regular rage damage and your weapon specialization damage. Yeah, so my I, regular weapon specialization, I think, is an... Pretty sure it's 10 lower than yeah. the normal thing you would add on, because so that's 15. your giant instinct bonus. Yeah, so so it's plus 15. Okay, yep. that sounds right. Good enough. It's math is hard. It's damage. Uh, That's going to be... That's 29? Bonk damage? 29 bonk. Is this that thing is 29 more bonk rebound than you four has five guys seconds. Forward. I mean, that's better than nothing. This mm -hmm. poor guy steps forward, shoots a rag, gets hit in the head by a giant just, hammer. Yeah, a hammer the size <laughs> of his entire body just crack and then just flies back in the marshal's hand and he still has it. Trishik. 
So they're standing. Well, the one guy is standing at the door. Um, on the he's far at side the northern the door, basically. Yes, at the door, firing at the phoenix. His back is to the northernmost door. I'm gonna sneak over there. Okay. Obviously, going clockwise around. Great. I'll just roll once for the two sneaks just to save us the difficulty. That's not a one. That's a fifteen. Yeah, okay, yeah, you're fine. Um, sneaking around over to this man, who is at this point he's still completely unharmed. For now. For now. He critically succeeded on the Phoenix save. Is there a lock on the door? I assume no. Uh, it appears to be uh, set. You can see it's set into the wall of the frame, much like the door on the other side was. It opens inward and it's just big and heavy. I'm kind of tempted to push him down into the middle of the room because it'd be funny, but... Just like, hey, Phoenix, here you go. Um, give you sacrifice. <laughs> I'm actually going to spend my third action to sneak... Uh, up and over the door, so I'm directly ab above him. Okay, You're just on the wall, being a sneaky lizard. If he retreats, I'm following him. That's fair, Chishik, or Raz. Um, Raz is gonna kind of perch himself on the wall now because he still has a climb speed. So he's just on the wall, so he doesn't have to keep flying. And he's gonna keep talking to the Phoenix. Hey, me and the four other idiots with me are friends. The two guys with bows and arrows that are shooting you and me are not friends. Um, once they're gone, we, you can just leave. Please. If you uh, continue to attempt to plead to it over the sounds of battle and it attacking and arrows flying and Marshall throwing hammers across the room, you get the sense that unless you have some kind of a feat that's going to let you make an impression yeah. within three actions or bon less. Bon Mon. <laughs> <laughs> That is an impression that can be made within three yeah, actions. This is a hopeless cause. I cast Soothe on him. I mean, it's not going to make an impression, but it is friendly magic. It's calming magic. That is accurate. Cast a fourth level Soothe on him. Okay. Okay. Oh. You cast a fourth level Soothe on the Phoenix. Yep. Universal language. Um, he has taken a shot, so you roll me that, uh, that heal there. Um, let's see what I can do. 5, 15, 24, um, 29, plus another 4 times 4, so 16. So 45. 45. Yep. 45. Okay. Okay. Big ol' big ol' <laughs> smile. How do you talk Rat smile. to Rat a smile. phoenix? It's just your mouth's open. <laughs> As it feels this magic touch, it kind of cranes its neck back around towards you. Seeing his hammer fly past it and bonk into the other guy <laughs> shooting at you, and turns back around to the man who is shooting at it, and sort of whips its entire head back and slings forward as a swirling surge of fire flies down to the guy directly beneath, uh, beneath your sheet here. Oh, it's not an AoE, okay. No, I was, <laughs> like, I, was, I was like, here we go. It's actually just a ranged attack. Okay. Fire. It just, it's. Bah. And uh, as he shoots this, the guy made the door, seeing this sail in, is going to uh, quickly almost dive out to the side. Um, and this is going to hit the ground and burst into a fountain of flames. There's uh, the AoE. Where he was just standing. No, it's like a. It's a You're making it sound a whole lot like I'm getting included in <laughs> Squares are five feet. They're real big. It's like a he's localized shooting fire. a That's big fair. blast of fire on the ground where he was. It sits there and continues to burn just he's beneath just you. He's just really twitchy. Yeah. It's, but, uh, it's a localized just, you, fire. You, I can hit you with something if you would like me to hit you with something. I, would I mean, prefer I can do not. that. I was ready for it because I was like, oh, now the AoE is going to be over here where I am. But you didn't do the AoE. And. Uh, as again, it flaps its wings, releasing another surge of heat before it begins to sail around the room, whipping the air within into a searing, uh, searing tornado once more. It calls out again in Celestial. Uh, you can see as it's moving, its vision kind of now fixed towards you as it comes around the room. You think these feeble magics, these parlor tricks are enough to... Uh, to earn my respect, you think I could believe anything that will come out, come out of Ashtori's minions now after the millennia? Who's a story? What? Who's a story? And uh, <laughs> need everybody to make reflex safe. That one's hitting all of you. <laughs> Did I make, was able to push Resme far enough away? Resme's far enough away, she'll be out. Roshin, it will hit you. 
It's very confused uh, about who a story yeah. is. Boop, boop, boop. Um, this one, as they, uh, the Phoenix took a moment this to... This is a story better. of a girl. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> towards the northernmost Scarlet Triad. It's not quite as intense as the last time this was done. Who lit us on fire in a world? Uh, what did it... One? It happens. Um, it the one who had been smacked by Marshall's hammer was like knocked over backwards and down just out of the range of this and critically succeeds through the comedy of errors. <laughs> Um, the one on the side. northern is busy trying to not stand in a giant pyrotechnic fountain and is going to fail and take a lot of a Damahogway. Um, let me roll some numerisms here. Very round number. Okay. Raz. 27. That critically fails. I noticed you have two hero points, I by used the way. One. You used a hero point. I had you a did four. use a hero point. It has to take in order to get. That's it's been giving me Malachite. really high rolls. That's Malachite going to critically fail. High. Roshin. 43. That's going to regularly succeed. Resume's fine. Trashik. 49. You will succeed, so you critically succeed. Marshall. 43. That's going to regularly succeed. Um, so it's going to be... It's 45. So 22 for the regular successes and 90... To Raz. 22, you said? Yes. Okay. And 45 to the guy do, 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 do. in the back of the Rembe to Sheik who just do, 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 took his first points of damage. That boy. Resume. I wasn't expecting to roll a 4 into a 1. I used a hero that point. That was truly unfortunate. It happens sometimes. It does happen He's sometimes. He's not dead. Um. Uh, so Resme will, <laughs> Resme will try to grab at Severin to keep him from flying up into the me. door. Uh, but oh. Severin will actually fly up into the doorway and start squawking at it in bird. We're trying every language here. And it's a bird. Obviously, he, it speaks bird. And he, I don't know that that's a language <laughs> that exists. All animals, no, all animals in there inherently, inherently have, a have a language. Yeah, but I mean, bird. Like, I don't think chickens talk to crows about like. Not, you don't know. No, the weird smelly languages. guy outside the Seven Eleven. So, I don't think they have like it, a universal. Yeah, but it, it does. It's okay. He's doing a mating dance. No, no, he literally he can is. Speaking bird, the phoenix just won't understand it. <laughs> He is literally going to start singing of her beauty and tell her that he's been waiting he's his whole life for her. He, he fails his reflex. He has as much health as, and saves as uh, Resume does. Yeah, familiar as a pretty hard to kill. And um, he's going to use his diplomacy to try to convince this bird. Wouldn't this be performance? He's more performance. He's oh, dancing. it is performance. He's dancing. <laughs> That's fine. He has some performance. As Severin dances here before the stage, <laughs> what are you doing? Uh... Can I see what just happened to Raz, or did she push yeah, me out of the way? Falls on the ground. He's <laughs> <laughs> all scorched. How are you looking, Raz? A zero. Unconscious. <laughs> oh, did you go down? Yeah. Oh. 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 You're already in the right place. Yeah. <laughs> did you say that? Huh? Did you say anything? Yeah, no. I, I, I'm down. Yeah. Did you like? Did you mention anything did about no. going down, did or not... were you just gonna quietly be unconscious in the corner? Oh no, I knew. Or he I knew. knew. <laughs> Oh, right. Right. I just splats out of the ground. I figured uh, everyone just assumed I'd take 90 points of damage and I'm done. That's dying, like more than my max health. Dying too. He went down to a critical yeah. failure. Um, can I see Raz? Yeah, he'd be in the doorway. He would have fallen in the doorway now. Marshall caught me. Just kind of bounce off of Marshall's shoulder. And just Resme, ground. I swear, if you walk back in that room. <laughs> no. Uh, Resme uh, is going to uh, reach out with her magic uh, and use collective transposition to just move him around the corner. Out of fire explosion Out of fire range. explosion range. Okay. So like... Like near, next, next to you? Like next to what me, but say? behind me. Okay, so you, you collect the trans... Yeah, absolutely. You collect... Quest that spell. Teleport Rez, uh, his body appearing right behind you. Very severely burnt on the ground um, uh, with an arrow. <laughs> Again, just like we started... We, we, where, where we started? On the ground, <laughs> barely alive with a couple arrows sticking out of him. One action heal. Wake up. Touch. <laughs> what, uh, <laughs> what level? It's one action heal. It's, I'm gonna. You pick a level. It doesn't. I, I'm just gonna do a a first level because I just want to get him up. D8. D8. One. 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 No, it's a five. Okay. Yeah, five health three, res. Oh, it's a three. You're right. You three Even better. <laughs> Even you closer. You are prone and wounded one. 
That's fine. The Look call conscious. to Phrasma's boneyard is strong with that. this one. Phrasma wants me. So, Roshan, you see all this. You see Severin trying to flap up uh, around Marshall, doing, like, the little bird mating dance Stop with his it. wings kind of folded over. Like, sort of in Marshall's view here around his head. Oh, yeah. Race. Performance check. <laughs> Roshan. Oh. I'm sorry. We have, we have things to do, and this is already taking forever. I'm going to clog it with rolls that can't possibly do anything. All right. Uh, so Roshin is going to stride up next to Marshall to get in range of a divine lance. Into the room. She into goes. the yeah, yeah. Into the sweltering tornado. Into oh the sweltering tornado, um, and then that's going to be a schlade and fire a, a crimson arrow at the triad agent. Okay. Uh, it's only a thirty-four. Yeah, thirty-four. Um, as he's down avoiding this blast of sweltering heat uh, is going to definitely avoid that one. And I'm going to leave the room back out of range with my <laughs> quickened action. <laughs> These archers here, the one in the back, uh, continuing to just lose his volley fire upon this phoenix. With your uh, assuming magic everything, even though he's landing a couple of these arrows, the phoenix does not seem deterred or injured literally at all as far as you can tell, but it is again very hard to tell when its heat just incinerates the evidence as soon as it lands. Uh, the one on the eastern side, however, uh, still keeping his fight against the heroes of Breach Hill with what he can see in the room now is literally just Marshall. Um, is going to first faint 38 against your perception, DC. That, uh, <clears throat> that is a, that passes, yeah. Which will mean that this shot will be flat footed against you. Mm. Or 51 to hit. Uh, fortification rune, dang it. Oh, fortification rune. I already picked up all the D6s. That is not a 13. Or a 17, I mean. So That is a 3. That is an 8. That's an 8. That's half of a 3. That's or two halves of a 3. That's, that is also, not even stop, close. all of you. So, I mean, yeah, you this try. is going to hurt. Yeah, if you take two threes, you put them together, that's an 8. Yeah, I get it. It's just stop. <laughs> My brain hurt. Ten? My whole body hurt. That's my save. Eighty-four. Stay down there. Ninety-four points of piercing damage. Mine is okay, so ninety. Of... I think the lingering performances weren't off. Oh, it's, it's been off. Okay. No, he's been Ed, tracking it. Ed's been tracking this four rounds. Well, it four actually rounds. I critically oh. succeeded. I thought it was three hundred critical success. So this is the last round of it. So the, yeah. yeah. Okay. Once it gets back to me, I mean, gone. it's still a good chunk of damage. And then uh, wow. loosing one more arrow, just free towards Marshall. I'm rolling one or 18 are the only two numbers that exist on this D20 today nice. so far. Um, Fortification rune. 48 with the minus five. Wow. Wow. Fortification Fort rune. It's That's an dings. 18. Woo! Ding. Fortification rune comes in. It's also not against your flat footed because he didn't critically yeah, succeed on the faint. Significantly better. Yep. So we and get once the again the DR magical 18 four. points of piercing damage. Oh, that's Only nice. That is almost literally, like, that is 20% of the first shot. That's like a paper cut. Um, as he continues to sort of foolishly press his advantage, he's moving again five feet. Uh, oh, five feet further back. You're big and scary. He's not stupid enough to move forth. Uh, Marshall. Hmm. Let's see, hold on. Let's go to that. <laughs> You're in range. I am in range. Just making sure I'm in range. Yeah, you got you got meeting room here. No, no. Oh, let's get to that. Boo. That's 30 feet. He's right at 30 feet, yeah. That was the guy who was under the ledge in the very beginning. No, he's never. You scared, never, scared, you scared, scared him. him. All right, give it to me. That's a nine. That's a nine. That's 39. 39 exactly critically succeeds. Oh my god. Critically? Really? Make That's that amazing. Save, Will is his worst save. That's amazing. He is just a, an archer. Let's do Will's it. Will's their worst. Will he or won't he? Yeah. There's that one. 43. 43 will be a regular success. So he's frightened too. Oh, that's fear that's into the man's close. heart. That's, that was very close. As he staggers, uh, um, he's frightened to and fleeing for one round. I'm frightened to and literally fleeing. Okay, yes. yeah, that dude is. Uh, you see him scrambling to run. Um, on that, uh, Marshall is going to psych up and get some temp HP because 
Firebird bad. Um, that'll be 13 more HP to that. And then I'm going to swing Boomy at him again. Throw. We. That is a 10 on the die. So that's going to be minus 3. 37. He's, He's frightened, frightened too. too. Yep. 37. <laughs> yeah. like... You have to set it up for you knock him down. There's been so many exact lethals uh, in this fight. It's crazy. Nuts. How many and too scared to death. Exact you see? Uh, too scared to death of the biggest demons, who are hilariously three levels lower than the guys with bows. That's huh. funny. They're the trash. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you uh, can tell by the things they did. 26 bonk. 26. All right, that's going to hit him in the face again. Yep. Just run and take this with you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll give him a tap on the way out. You're chic. Might as well. You see that uh, the one below you is kind of posturing, still dueling with this phoenix. The other guy taking some hits from Boomy coming to scramble towards his door as well. Can I hold the door closed? <laughs> by you. Yeah, it would, it would need to make an athletic check against your fort DC to wrench it open if you want to... Yeah. Basically ready to hold it as two actions. You still have one if you want to do something first. No. Okay. <laughs> You're going nowhere. Rez, you wake up I in mean, the hallway. I'm in a room really... of reflex saves and two guys who are failing them regularly. You definitely see them failing it regularly. Um, well, I mean, they're the only ones who have crit. They've each critically succeeded one. They're the only one. They're doing better than your party, realistically. They're about on, on parity with you for their success rate. But they are taking so more than I am. So I can watch them. I don't know burn. if that's accurate, honestly. Um, Rez. You wake up on the floor in the hallway here. Cold stone, and uh, you can hear birds screaming and explosions in the distance. It's frustrated Regular signs. screaming in the distance. <laughs> I'm sitting on him, so he can't get up. I'm going to inspire defense, inspire courage. Just from the ground. Just start Toot. singing. We can follow this again. <laughs> I was so close to making a breakthrough with the Phoenix. Just no one hit it. Maybe it'll calm down. And the uh, the Phoenix turning towards this doorway, uh, you see Cranny gets neck to look. It can see through the massive hole that you've made where Rez is and uh, calls out again in Celestial. If you speak true and if this is no farce, then leave me to my vengeance and flee this place. Done. And Sold. follows that with an incantation that brings a swelling rise of flames ripping through the southern half of the room. Oh, uh, boy. Uh, ripping that's... across Marshall and choking the doorway with a veritable wall of fire. I need, I believe, a reflex save for Marshall. Oh. Am I in am I in range for arcane countermeasure or can I not even see that? Uh, what's the range of arcane countermeasures? Uh, oh no. 120 feet. You can arcane countermeasures that, yeah. Then I'm arcane countermeasuring that. So that's plus two to whatever I it is. I don't think it's going to help. Um, it also makes the spell slightly weaker if it can be. If it can't be, yeah. There's actually no save on this because it admittedly does a lot less damage than I thought. Oh, there's no save on the on the initial. It doesn't have basic reflex save or anything nope. like that? Nope. If you are in the wall, you take it a damage. Okay. Um, huh. But it is much lower than I thought. It's not a lot. Man. It's actually it's not a, a lot. It's a wall. It's intended to be a deterrence, not a killer. Yeah, it's something that will keep hitting you if you choose to go back and forth through it. I don't choose to do that. It's not a lot. I mean, I'm... Pretty it's sure I failed regardless. It's, yeah, it's 32 points of fire damage. Because <laughs> <laughs> they got points. like a 34 or yeah, something. Yeah, 32 like points of fire damage. There's actually no save whatsoever. Is it regular fire damage? It's just or... regular fire damage. Okay, yeah, just it was literally sure. just that one thing that was the weird split fire damage. Okay. Uh, um, and that takes all of its focus to address you focus, uh, focus itself and summon up this wall of fire that now kind of segments this chamber, um, searing through this massive hole you've made and setting... Uh, much of the walkway in the southeastern corner of the room, a flame across Marshall, but then it physically turns itself towards Trashik and the Scarlet Triad members. Resume. Trashik, get out of there. It doesn't want anything to do with us. Let's just go. You don't actually know I'm in the room. I'm assuming no, you're we somewhere. Know. We know. You know I'm somewhere, but... 
There's two guys in that I need to be killed. I, it's, <laughs> more like, it's more like the undetected thing does not mean you can't make a relatively safe assumption that yeah. if she can't see you, you're doing something stupid probably in the room. <laughs> so, Let's just get out of there and leave. I will be in just a moment. Okay. Um, Raz, do you just keep doing that thing? Sav, get over here. Stop dancing for it. That would also take 32 points of fire damage. He's okay. very much into the wall fire. <laughs> uh, Severn at that leaves He's heartbroken and comes back over to me. Um, I'm just going to hold because I, I don't want to do anything. Machine? I told him the to leave. Floor look, the stone floor feels really nice right now. You should... One more, Raz. I wasn't expecting to One get... more. I was talking to it. Plot conversational. Aheen. Ah, <laughs> cast regenerate on Raz. Add a slip in there. Just a big old. You got regenerate 15. Yay. Sorry, you turned the 15 health back. Yay. Regen 15. Well, anything else, good sir? I've got. I'm just just looking at the at the, the encased wall. Let's just leave it alone. I'm sure it'll clean up the rest of them for us. I, I told Trishik that too. I'm not sure Trishik's smart enough to figure that out, isn't he? No. Oh, he's got I his look blood up, doesn't he? All right. Well, hopefully, he figures out. Let's let's try the other door. Hopefully, it's less explosive. <laughs> Which door? Uh, yeah, I'm the pointing iron, to the next one down the hallway. Sort of like the iron, uh, almost gel cell sort of door. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so moving down and pulling on that. Oh, I'm not pulling oh, on it. I'm not. To it. I'm moving to it. Okay. There's a okay. difference. Let's not start another encounter. <laughs> <before>. <laughs> Meanwhile, there are two archers in the room, one of which is continuing its duel with the phoenix, which uh, he seems like he's not doing fantastically, but he's doing okay. Oh, he's winning. He's, he's landing hits, but the phoenix just seems completely undeterred and, uh, again, has no visible signs of wear whatsoever, really. It's like it's barely even being injured. Meanwhile, Marshall is still a big ol' on-fire target over here. So he go faint. He's going to fail, back. for sure. The one in the back? No, the one on the side that's been shooting you guys the whole time. It's fleeing for me. Okay. He is fleeing. He's, right. He's going to run to the door. He's going to run to the door. And you know what that means. He's no. not, you're not Another door. Running the door. Oh, no. And uh, only on there are no melee. range of attacks. On oh, it's only a minute. Never mind. Uh, he is going bears. to run to the door. Never mind. My bad. And then that three would be his athletics check to attempt to open it, uh, which versus <laughs> the Sheik's so 36. <laughs> <laughs> I knew what? it would happen. Okay, he is an archer. Oh, man. He is untrained in athletics. He what? can't um, succeed. And as he yanks and pulls on I the just door have a here. Hand <laughs> and he can't see. He's going to try so it again. Mean. Um, not a 20. He, he doesn't is, succeed on a 20. Yeah, he untrained does not mean it's zero. Yeah, he has a oh, strength bonus. Have you seen NPC stat arrays? <laughs> like, That's he, fair. Uh, He'd have um, to have a beefy bonus to beat a 36. He's exactly enough. He has plus six to strength. Damn. Have you haven't seen? You you keep thinking NPCs are players. No, yeah. no like I didn't that, think that, that, that he had a, a plus fair six. Assumption. Uh, just for reference on how NPCs work, he has plus six to strength, plus nine to dex, plus five to con, plus seven to int, I want plus, plus five nine to, to wisdom, dex. and plus four to charisma. Where's my plus nine? Like to that's dex? just like his flat ability. That's his ability score modifiers. NPCs do not work like players. Huh. They just don't. So, uh, I guess I, I'm just gonna, my brain is just gonna say that's just shorthand to so make it easier for you to run numbers on them. Yeah, literally, for because it's for this exact purpose. Yeah. It's like, well, he's untrained in athletics, so it'd be a plus six. So he would literally need a 20. Okay. Uh, he's yanking on the door and it won't move. And uh, Trishik, <laughs> Trishik, you hear him calling to his so friend. Uh, you hear him call out his friend. He's just taking shots at this phoenix who's looking over at him, and he's just like in a babbling panic here. <laughs> Look at the door! The door's stuck! We can't find him! Look at the side of the hammer! It's bigger than both of us! We have to get Treagle! <laughs> we have to get out! You think they're still evacuating? Come on, help me! <laughs> Marshall. Well, I guess it is time to leave. Darn it. Standing in a wall of fire, ruminating. <laughs> so Marshall, it's just a <laughs> Marshall, even as Mega Marshall, is like a big disappointed kid and walks out of the wall of fire, leaves the room, uh, at least far enough away so the phoenix can do what it wants. 
Um, and I'll put Boomy away and pick up Big Red. Big Red's in the hallway. Are you walking out to it? Yeah, I'm walking out to okay, it. Walk I out mean, I might as well pick it up. Even if it's still infected, I don't think it's going to yeah. be permanent. And so. as you pick it back up, you immediately feel this uh, sickening revulsion overcome you again. But you have it. Rashik, <laughs> you're just holding the door here. And this dude's... Hold door. And just in case I need it... No, I'll leave my, my other... Put the bow away. Okay. So hold door with one hand, put bow away. So we'll do it this way. Are any of you doing anything with this room? This room? No. no. Mm -hmm. You guys, because Trishik has volunteered to take a crap ton of fire damage. Uh, but if none of the rest of you are relevant to this encounter anymore, um, we will make it go faster by doing it this way. There All is for that. Yeah, that's fine. Trishik yeah. getting ass roasted and you guys not over Re that good. So you all outside. I'm only sticking around for one more round. Are having a good time. This is Trishik, make point? me a reflex save. What As uh, once again, this room together. just bursts forth into fire. Another four. Would I still be raging technically at this moment or am I? Um, take it. What's the consequences of my own be raging actions? unless you take choose. It. I would love to you. Up to you. I take okay. half damage. Well, okay. since I don't really want anything to do with this anymore. I'm probably just going to go in. back to regular martial arts. So it's 150 50 health, yes. Tailor made for me. Wow. Tailor made for you. That puts me on the I know. <laughs> <laughs> I figured I asked. That's my last level seven. So, so Trishik, you enjoy it. Trishik will take 25 oh, more points of fire damage late, as he's taking half from this uh, sweltering room. Yeah. Both of the goons will fail this time. They took um, significantly more than I did. They would take uh, about approximately double what you did. Yeah, taking a good amount of fire damage there. I also have the ring. Of what? Fire. fire. Yeah, that helps for sure. I helps on 25 15. a lot, yeah. Do you have the greater one? Yeah. Oh, so you only take 10 then. Oh, solid. No, 15. Um, 25 down. It's it's 10 resistance. 10 resistance. Okay. The major Matt. is 15. You explained that in the worst possible way he for did. what I was asking. He did. No. By telling me the opposite of what I wanted. But fair enough, I got it. we got there. Um, what do you do, Trishik? Well, that happened. Uh, does it look like they still want to leave the room? Or are they going to try and fight this out? Um, what does it look like they they're doing? Kind of see that this is going poorly. Um, the one is fighting the Phoenix, seeing that he hasn't done very much damage here, is also going to take a couple of attempts. None of which are 20s. This boy is going to take a couple of attempts. Um, none of which are 20s. They are starting to attempt to figure out getting of, out of the room, it seems. They are deciding this maybe is not going fantastically for them. Perfect. I'm going to strike one of them and then leave. With uh, Cloak of the Montebank. And you slap a guy. So... It yeah. doesn't matter. You slap a oh. guy, and then you spin your number low enough to die to that. You pull your club of the matter, make it a poof die. of smoke. I wanted to insult him. Oh, you you can uh, you were reaching for dice. Don't roll dice. We don't okay. need dice right now. But whatever you want to do, do. Just reach down, attack one of them, and uh, have fun, you two. Goodbye. Bow to the phoenix as I pull the cloak and leave the room. And you poof and kind of back to the party out here. Mm-hmm. Down the hall, out of sight of the phoenix. Oof. So as you. Poof yourself back down the chamber. See, you I can, told you it would be perfectly fine. You can I still hear. Was far more worried about the phoenix than you. The calls of this phoenix in the distance, the loosing of arrows, and uh, goodbye, a, my love. A vigorous battle happening back Jeez. in the distance, but it is a battle that we are no longer concerned with. Well, that this sucked. Raging wall of mm -hmm. flame in the doorway. The fairly potent reminder of how dissuaded we've been of continuing this engagement, but the Phoenix also seems to have seen fit to let us go about our business. You know, I you? suppose if you're going to go ahead and have a forge and you don't want to actually haul fuel all the way down here, you could just seal a Phoenix up inside it. I suppose that's just how the wizards thought back in the days. I guess so. Lord Lamb and Breachton would have never made such a mistake. Actually, it worked out quite well for the wizard. Phoenix didn't get out so long after he was dead. It's been thousands of years. That was a great time. He yeah. had to be forever. But um, with us all 
We convene here in the hallway and the sounds of scorching and shooting and screaming in the distance. I dissuaded them from leaving the room. I want to wonder what's behind door number two. Let's take our break. <laughs> yeah. And then we can look behind door number two. I'll miss her forever. How many horrible things could possibly live beneath the Red Pyramid? Well, it seems Another like it was phoenix. a relatively potent <laughs> wizard. If they had a phoenix bound to be a Forge. functionally a pile of coals. <laughs> Jesus. I'll never see her again. No, you won't. Be back in a couple of minutes. Probably five to ten minutes, everybody. Probably more than ten. Don't forget to stand up, stretch your legs, you fill your drinks, use the bathroom. When we return, well, that can stay over there. Round, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Round two. Go. Fight. Over here. Yep. BRB, everybody. Welcome back, everybody. What a <laughs> pretty bird. It's really pretty. It's a very pretty, very... Love of my life. Very angry bird. I mean, a majority of Paizo's artwork is really great. I like fiery women. The art is fantastic. It's great. <laughs> I love... That's part of why I like the Mystery cards. Hey, I get all this. I have... Like the entire, obviously it's Phoenix. The entire thing I can just look out without having to have a bestiary open next to me, and page flip, and also you guys get the art. Like these, these are so well designed. That's so smart to put the art on the backside so I can just do something like this. Yeah. And I can see all my thing, and you can see your need uh, imagination station creature that's very angrily and uh, burninating the countryside. Yeah. <laughs> Burninating the, burn the, the Phoenix. humans. Definitely a Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> And as we come back, that phoenix is uh, very angry. Find a Having roaring a barbecue. You say wall that as flame. though there are others. <laughs> <laughs> no, that <see>. phoenix <laughs> <laughs> is behind a roaring wall of flame. It's only some twenty feet away. I would say that's not a comfortable different distance. That's like the distance to that wall over there. It's you know, it's right there, and you can hear the battle cries and the screaming and the calls and the wings flapping. You know, that laboratory seems nice and secluded and quiet. Do you, do you, want, to, do you want to dip in there for just a bit? And you can still Please. feel the searing heat emanating out from this wall and this battle. I, I would not <laughs> like to stand around here for that long, actually. Raz has got what? Quite literally three hit points. Regenerate. Regeneration. No, regenerate. Raz is regenerating. He's getting more by the minute. His skin like, is just kind of growing just, back, fur poking back out through the <laughs> Charred and crispy bits of his body. I feel great, but I feel uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, do you feel uncomfortable, Raz? I'm so sorry that my magic, which is knitting your flesh back together before great. your very eyes, is making you feel uncomfortable. Let did me you, cradle you like the little baby you know, that you're Roisin, being right Roisin, now. Does Roisin <laughs> normally ignore the first part of a sentence? Roisin, she's grumpy right now. You know how she gets when her blood is up. No, oh, the cars. If you're making cars. another period joke for me right now, I'm just... No, 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 no. Look at, God. look at you, mirror. Like, you're literally, like, the blood is flowing back into you. Oh, yes, yes, no, I was shot a few times. As you all withdraw out here to the hallway together, that would end your engagement in the combat. Your rage would end. Your curse would, would stop healing you as you pull back the relative safety here, but you all are on the western end of this round passageway around this central laboratory by the iron door. You can see that through it, um, there is but a uh, short gap between this strange cell cage and a much more standard pair of wooden doors beyond. One directly behind it, one set into the wall will be to your right on the northern side of the passage. How are you looking, dear? <sighs> Right? Yeah, it's a bit, bit burned, a bit after, shot, but you know, that's business as usual this place. After a minute, I'm almost back to max. Rez is feeling better as his skin comes <laughs> back together. I'm a little again. crispy. Sure, she got a little seared. How's Marshall? <laughs> uh, I could use a tater or two, maybe three. You, I, I, I can't imagine. Here, honey, have some. How was this? It's 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 a healing potion, dear. Oh, don't Logistically, it. you're gigantic. Mm -hmm. You get shot with an arrow. Uh -huh. It goes, you know, either into or amongst your vital organs because you're very large and they have some space. Right. You shrink back down. Arrow still inside you. Yeah. So by so wait so by the by that logic that would mean that the arrow would make a really tiny injury on Marshall when he's shot when he's big, right? Yeah. So he should because take like a lot less damage from the normal I attack. I think that's represented by the amount of hit points that he has. <laughs> he has no more hit points when he grows big. I get. Like he gets a lot of resistance, but yeah. to getting bonked. 
because those small cracks in his bones are negligible in the grand scheme of things. His vital organs are still very vital. So I, yeah. But he has a bunch of very tiny arrows sticking yeah. in front of him now, I'd I, imagine. I just want to make a point that I want all of you to keep in mind. There is no way that Treagle is going to let us rest for any specific amount of time before we go in there and fight him. No, definitely not. And, and we have no idea how much space and things that want to kill us are between us and him. Phoenix scream in the distance. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, I feel the need to tell you that I'm conserving resources <laughs> to a significant amount at this point. Explosion. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... I would suggest we all be a little bit more careful. Wait, what did you say? I couldn't hear you over the gates of fire. <laughs> Just a pillar of Just fire from the doorway. Try not to get lit on fire as much as you can, gentlemen, lady. Well, I'm going to donate this elixir. Well, and, uh, you, you know what? That's true, Resme. I won't push fine. out of the room next time. No, 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 uh, dear. That was very nice of you, and I appreciated it. You're sweet. That's a wonderful very plan. Very kind of you. Thank you. So I'm actually take going healing to potion. Thank drink you. an elixir. Here you a go, dear. greater elixir. And I'll drink it. What, which one is this? This is the big honka one. Oh, you're giving me the major? Yeah. Okay, cool. I'll take it. Thank you. I Do you have a small one? Drink them big. Uh, uh, I have a couple of small ones. I could use... I'll use well, a few as you hand these out, really are bad. you taking a... 10 minute rest in the hallway? It doesn't sound like No, we we're just no, no, doing no. potions. Let me see. Hand out some potions quickly. Yep. Here, I have a, a couple of uh, 3d6, like I'm actual potions. Like, these are not right. alchemy. Like, these are ones contact. that I've been saving. Okay. Uh, no. These are f uh, 5d6 plus 12. I have oh. two. That's it. That's all I got. That'll, that'll be fine. 10d6 plus 24 to Marshall. Imagine how cool this tile would feel underground. 10d6 plus 24. There's a giant wall of flame. I mean, it's heating up really fast. But, but it okay. would be very nice, cool uh, tile have, to I, I'll roll it for you. Okay. Okay. House cat. I look Six, almost seven. back to full after drinking that elixir. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yep. Seven. <sighs> Good roll. Okay. 11. I'll take it. 16, 20. I come to a realization, bows and arrows are very dangerous. Yes, they are. Why do you think I have one? Yeah, they should make wow. some kind of law. It's been a minute 30, since 30, you've... 37, 40, 41. That's 65. Wow. That's a, that okay? was a hot that's roll. A, that, that, that is a very good rolling. chunk. Bows oh. and arrows are very dangerous. Are, they literally... Yes. Yeah, what killed your last character? A bow and arrow. <laughs> That's what I thought. I was just yeah. checking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bow and arrow. Come on, I'm scared. I was just double checking yep. that we're on the same page there. Yep, bows and arrows are Resume, very dangerous. They are the bane. And just to make her point, Resme looks scratched and banged up a little bit, but she's not healing herself. She's just chilling. She's grown up so fast. Oh. <laughs> That's uh, because Raz needs all of Remember it. Remember Citadel Altarian, which is like, I broke a nail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we call that character progression. That's it. That's it. Yeah, broke she's a like, nail. Sing. Sing. Oh, my nail's better. I mean, regenerate. This is the longest <sighs> I've gone in with back to back fights being normal size. Uh, Severin, she's going to give, because she still has them, some of the tarts from her halfling knapsack bag so that he can have some healing. Well, he's a little scorched. He's lost some, some feathers. The yeah. Severin, fire there. for a moment there, you look just like the phoenix. I did? You're so right. It was the, it was the light of love in my eyes. I am on fire. <laughs> I almost forgot. Um, <laughs> is Marshall still disgusted by Big Red? Um, as you sit here... Dealing with these injuries and looking at it, this disgust, you take a moment to kind of reflect and cards. think about it. You I'm would wounded. be able to push through and overcome that. And as you do, this light would fade from Do Big Red, muted as well. I mean, I uh, over the next couple of minutes, yeah, fading entirely from all of your equipment. Cool. Are you sure? Yeah. I'm right. I am wounded one. He, he picks it up. He kind of just... <sighs> okay, you're me again. <laughs> But after, I'd say, maybe three minutes of rustling around trying to organize these potions and uh, what respite you can get here before this iron door, how do you proceed? The wall of fire still roars up above, um, but has started to fade down, and the room beyond is almost completely filled with smoke at this point, almost totally obscuring any vision into what was once the Phoenix Forge Chamber. Uh, the smoke kind of rolling out from the room, uh, starting to sort of spread across the ceiling in here. Hmm. They actually called it the Phoenix Forge Chamber? It's called the Phoenix Forge. 
Huh. Uh, is I mean that is well, how would you describe the room? Oh, I, I just mean, didn't know like if that if that's the official room of it. I wonder if it was like was it like written above the doorway or something? I, I would have or... called it the it's fire in the hole with a forge that has a phoenix. In oh, it. I'm not saying so it's inappropriate. Like, I'm yeah, just get, get, on the nose. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they might have. I'm using it descriptively. It might have another name, but I mean, like if you had fire a blacksmithing hole. forge with a phoenix in it. Oh, I I, I feel I'd like you would refer that. to it as the Phoenix Force. Yeah, I'd brag about that. It would be like that. a thing that we would just come to. I think we should go through this. I door. would actually call it my great great be grandchildren's quiet. problem. We're going through a door. <laughs> what door? The one iron door. The yeah, barn door. door. The bar door. Yeah. The one that looks like a jail cell. Uh, this door in front of you is uh, pretty clearly locked. As I, as you kind of retake up your positions around here. Um, Rasheen's token, if we're on the map, somehow inside the iron cell. They're not really sure how that happened. She's very thin all of a sudden. Is there um, a, is the cell door like here? Yes, it's like flush with the walls of the passageway. It is oh. before the two wooden doors behind it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I was, uh, that is not at all yeah, how Yeah, I guess on the map it implies. is kind of just like three dots. It's not super visible because I, it is It is not at all visible, actually. Bar door. It's definitely not visible under a token, I would imagine. Well, I would assume that, uh... Perhaps, or uh, what? What are they? Marshall, do you just want to break the door off the wall? Okay. Well, the um. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it works so well for him. The break DC is hilariously low. With no effort, he could absolutely just grab it and pull it off of the hinges. Legendary. Um, this mm -hmm. door has been brought in, installed here. Clearly, much more uh, again in addition by the triad. Definitely much more recent than the rest oh, of the temple. The and this not is a what he is. huge amount of effort was put into making it the best and the greatest. It is there to prevent people from easily passing, but it is literally no effort. It is DC twenty five to rip it off the hinges. It is literally wow. no effort. For nice. Slightly more effective would, than a keep I would outside. Have to yeah, roll it is, one, and I would still succeed probably. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it Raz, is just Raz there do it. to stop it from being done easily. <laughs> even like even for me, that's. Like yeah, no, you can you can yank this thing off the hinges. Yeah. It's, it's it's not great. Oh, look at you. Ah. Okay, so I rip open the door. All the points what that don't do go to see? go to strain. You see a small <laughs> passageway leading to two doors that we could already see. Yeah, you know, the, oh, okay. it's an iron it's a bar barred door. door. It was not blocking your line of sight. My bad. It was blocking <laughs> um, his line of sight. <laughs> what do we see? You holding a door. <laughs> Good All job. right, Marshall. through the hallway. Let's go throw it in the hallway. Or see, um, which door do we get through first? Right. Sure, why not? I mean, I Actually, I don't like that one because it's closer to the room with the phoenix in it. Let's go to the straight one. Okay. That's fair. Would you like me to lead the way again? You know, that's probably a good idea. <laughs> just squeeze the token. Well, I'm just going to leave everyone back in the hall and I'll scoot on up to that door. And... Um, opening the westernmost door <laughs> would lead into uh, what looks to be a very loosely, uh, lightly and casually appointed chamber. Uh, a few simple tables, uh, a couple of decks of cards, stacks of small game pieces and tokens, a few crates and satchels around the edges of the room uh, imply that this might be just a simple break room of sorts. It doesn't look like anything of value is stored within here, nor is anybody there at the present. But opening the door to the north leads into a much... Uh, similar passageway to the one that you're in right now. Uh, a walkway heading parallel to this little ingress hall, east and west. Uh, narrow enough that two people could just uh, barely walk abreast uh, without discomfort, punctuated by five more sets of cell doors, clearly segmenting into small prison chambers. Uh, given your large size, whether you can squeeze or not, it is going to be extremely difficult and awkward for Trishik to move or position himself in this passageway at all because it's like snakes around. You can, but nobody else is going to be able to get past yeah. you. You will fully fill <laughs> this passageway trying to squirm around in as you can, which with given your feet is something you can definitely do, but it's certainly not comfortable. So I'm just going to uh, <clears throat> just stand up. No reason to hide. Yeah, I believe we've found the jail cells. It's a bit tight. Oh. Welcome to go. And oh. I'll go into the open room. The perfect, room? perfect. Let's see what we can find. We get to, we find any luck in here. I'll go with Rishi. Yeah, I was head on into the jail cells. And hearing uh, these voices outside, a voice would emanate out in response from within. Uh, and you would see a figure in the second of these cells, sort of curiously barely poking up enough to, uh, to view. These doors are kind of offset aligned. You have the doorway that comes in and you have the cell door 
uh, the second one askew, and it kind of all has a bit of a straight line down to this entryway by this iron cell. So there's a little slot you can see of a face with a dark eye and a very oddly shaped skull. And Rasheen, as you come into the area here, the face recedes back into cell immediately uh, before you come around into view of it properly here. And a kind of somewhat shrill voice calls out to address you. No further! Do not... You are not welcome, nor allowed, to gaze upon my flesh. Remain as you are. Who are you? Why are you here? I'm sorry. No, there's no way you're Triad. You never... Triad wouldn't even have the cheek to go talk to us that way. <laughs> nor are you, as I can tell by your garb. Are you the rescue team? Have the Packmasters reached out? They reached out to you. Oh, fascinating. Uh, yes, that's exactly us. Uh, I suppose you're the missing packed master then. Fetch me clothes that I may clad myself so we can proceed with this business. You will free me, we'll have our vengeance, and be about our days. Right, uh, San Darkan, I assume. Ah. So you have been sent to find me. Yes, that is I. Etrix Tregal and a Scarlet Triad have imprisoned me here for uh, some few days, I suppose, as leverage against the Packmasters for whatever operations they're currently conducting. Excuse me. Excuse None me. None of this is relevant. Did you misunderstand? You speak common. You're communicating with me. Fetch me garb. Excuse yes, me. I'm, uh, I'm doing... This is my area of expertise. Move. Oh, yes, of course. Resume has a lovely dress that could fit you perfectly. Uh, I'm going to start tweaking appearances. Um... That? So it's a feat that lets me um, dress somebody and disguise them very, very quickly in like less than a minute. The second you come out around the corner into the front of the cell to, uh, to, to help him, of course there is still a cell door in the front, you're still mm -hmm. locked in a prison cell. He immediately screeches, get back, wench, did you not understand my commands? Do not look upon me, back off, fetch me clothes. What, what do you think I'm doing? You will hand them, place them before the cell and I will take them. You don't want me to disguise you? You have no permission to gaze upon my flesh. Remove yourself and hand me things that I may garb myself. Then we will continue this conversation. Do you have, like, really bad skin? Must we consider this conversation? Uh, she'll Can hand him the clothes. Can we just leave him in the cell and go home? You won't do no such thing. I am one of the Packmasters of Katapesh. My command just, of this city is absolute. Just, oh, what do a shame. No, no, I, I'm handing him the clothes. Katapesh. And he is in the dinkiest little crappy <laughs> cell. It's... In the bottom of the red pyramid. Unfortunately, all still I have- Still locked, but you have not unlocked his cell door. No, he is we still haven't. stuck in there. I don't think I will at this point. <laughs> Unfortunately, and... all I have are really cute party dresses. So he's kind of got what he's got at this point. I mean, it's better than naked. He can put a skirt over his face. Yeah, yeah, he's Wait. got he's got a I mean, masquerade no mask and a really cute party dress. I was gonna make him look like he was going to a ball because that's what I have with me because that's who I am. So you hand him a party dress? <laughs> yes, it's literally a dress. <laughs> you, and you pray, place this down and like you know, just place it in front of the cell. Yep. Like he reaches through and pulls it. You immediately hear sounds of fabric gripping and tearing. More. This is not sufficient. Oh, this is going to hurt so much. I give him another well, dress. No, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's not waste them. Let's not waste them. Aren't there any bed clothes on any of these other beds? Oh. We can give him that. If he's going to be just ripping the clothing up. I mean. Are there any? I have. Um, well, you blankets, have killed a sheets. great number of these people and been through plenty of places where they'd sleep. Um, the area where you had met the pair of commandos, uh, just another like chamber to the south here. Oh, there oh, the curtains. curtains. No, 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 no. There were also even yeah, curtains. Even there were also their better. foot lockers and their crates. There were more of their clothes. Yeah. That were in curtains. Their, like, curtains. No. Trying to get your curtains. <laughs> even better. Treagle's bedding. No, he doesn't rate that. He doesn't rate really silk? Annoying. Are you Actually, kidding me? But it's insult to Treagle. No, it's not. No, 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 insulting Treagle is when I run my sword through his face. What she said. No, it's when I you bond my Treagle's. <laughs> so you bring Sundark on. I have my eyes closed in front of him. Some some curtains. Curtains. You close it in. I'm definitely looking at him. I'm not looking We are at him. here in the Nexus of Scarlet Triad's activity, the heart of their home base, and the best you can find for me is curtains. I just Even eyes closed, gesture at myself. Ripping You're just going to rip him up anyway. You know, you're already happening. You have more ripping sounds. Do you want Treagle's bedding? This will do for now. Comes out looking like a mummy. You hear his voice uh, immediately kind of calm it. All right. You may approach my cell. Let me look. 
Yeah, I guess right, that then. Uh, I was standing there like pretty ridiculous. much the whole time, not moving. If you were in front of cell door? No, like I'm in front of the oh. cell door looking away from him, but I didn't move. If you turned away, he would have accepted that. Um, I'll turn back around. The rest, the rest of you look, and you see a uh, figure. You have never seen any part of the pack masters honestly they are completely clad strange mask and all you have no concept of what they look like but now this man has the uh, the masquerade mask is kind of wrapped around the bottom half of his face um it looks like it may have been a sleeve of it just sort of wound around his head uh he has p- ripped and punched some holes in the curtains to put it over his head and wear it almost as just an oversized tabard um, as well as a couple of holes to put his four arms through, as he does appear to have two on each side. Uh, two on each side. You can see that his skin is a sort of pale green, almost akin to uh, many of orcish descent, though his figure clearly demonstrates that he is nothing uh, alike to that. His legs appear to have two sets of joints. Uh, his thigh is ending in something like a traditional knee, but then immediately switching back again, uh, almost like a goat hoof, giving his leg three near equally long segments uh, that reach down to clawed two-toed feet at the end of each. They're bugs. As uh, is kind of an insectile appearance. I was thinking honestly. grasshopper immediately. It's, that's not wholly wrong, uh, but what you can see of his face through the uh, gaps he has put together here are jet black eyeballs somewhat akin to an elf Mm -hmm. uh, but otherwise somewhat surprisingly human features in his visage Hmm. i mean it's it's catapesh like and roshin doesn't know enough to know how exotic this may or may not be so he's just another weird looking guy who's in the city possibly to her yeah he would look unlike absolutely anything any of the rest of you have ever seen or heard of for that matter um, he would, like, bits of him would be reminiscent of other races, but uh, much as I've described, but the creature as a whole is something completely alien. Marshall, mm-hmm. you take that end of this, re- this grate, I'll take this one. Okay. And, and both just equally as easily rip. just yank that one off as well. Huh. Brutish, but effective. So, you know of me. I am Sandarkin, and you, I assume, are the strike team that has been sent to evacuate me, but before we leave, you will aid me in slaying Etrix Treagle and ending the Scarlet Triads rule here in Catfish. Ah, brilliant. Oh, we no are, You know what? I like you already. We've That's been perfect. chasing them across the world, killing them one by one, so really it's no extra work. Does he intend to help us with this, or does he expect us to do it because he says so? You weren't sent here to rescue me and enact the pack master as well. Well, you're not. You will do so. Slay him. Would you like to leave? <laughs> no, like of, course, you... of course not. I he would just like said to he watch his to... demise. Why, you are not he, why are you all... <laughs> no, he's offering to help. Let him come and help with us. I'm not offering to help. <laughs> that is he is commanding you to slay him and I will bear witness to his demise. Oh, he's going to sit in the car. Well, you know what? It doesn't matter then whether he's there or not. So fair enough. I'm I just... mean, as long as he's out of the way, I don't care. No impact whatsoever. All right, just... Uh, that was already kind of on the agenda anyways, right? Let's yeah, go. Yes. Yeah, he's yeah. literally told us nothing to do that we weren't already going to do. And as you kind of talk much yourselves, he's looking across you. He's just, his shoulders kind of loosen a little bit. And he crosses his lower set of arms. Hmm. You Just my head poking around the corner <laughs> looking in the room. <laughs> Giant lizard head. I apologize for my bluntness. It is ill-befitting of my station. But I have been trapped down here for some days and would wish nothing more than to see the demise of Lord Treagle, which is something that you will provide to me as you continue to enact, as I assume you are the Packmaster as well. You, I assume, have been sent by the city of Katapesh? Uh, in a manner of so speaking. We were on our way anyway. I mean, I'm what delayed the council so long? Why did it take some days for you to arrive? Uh, is this your failing or something of the Packmaster? We just learned about it today. Yeah, we just found out today. They had to so. have a whole meeting, uh, strip the triads, official council protection, etc., etc. Bureaucratic red tape. You understand, it, I'm sure. And then Triegel told us that he had you as insurance. Yes, it only we- took us a matter of, what, a couple hours to get here? I suppose understandable. It was uh, perhaps something he could have hidden more than I expected. I was unaware the pack masters did not know of my abduction until recently. Uh, they did not. Then you do not deserve to be the targets of my ire. Well, I should need to direct this towards Regal himself. All right, my would-be rescuers have done well to reach this far. Uh, I know not exactly where it is I currently reside. I know it is deep within their headquarters of the Red Pyramid. And to have arrived here, 
This must have been a difficult operation. Yeah, don't go to the left. There's like a phoenix god in that room. I've died twice. It. She's been as melodramatic, but not that much. Has something gone wrong with the phoenix forge? It, the phoenix kind of escaped. It's a little angry. I think the triad caused enough damage and it uh, finally managed to slip its bonds. And to my understanding, they were putting quite a strain on it trying to repair that orb of theirs. No matter what it is or why Treagle cares for it, so, but... That oh. forge is half of why he uh, shared this interest in the Red Pyramid initially. Well, don't you worry about it. Nothing to be worried about right now, then. Uh, yes, we have things to be about, I believe. Right. I appreciate you for providing me with uh, some manner of clothing leather to which to clad myself, be it curtains or no. But you want to speak of, to no one of what you have seen here this day? So, of course not. Oh, of course. That's part of the contract, you see. As all my people, as all pack masters, I do possess some teleportation magics. Though, without the ability to see any proper destination from here, Trigo is well aware that a succession of several doors would prevent me from escaping easily. I'm also unaware of the passageway that led here, so I would have almost certainly been swiftly recaptured had I attempted to make an escape on my own. That said, I will follow you as you meet Justice, the leader of the Triad, and. Should you fail to protect me adequately, I am more than capable of teleporting myself away to safety. Ah, oh, good to know. Once I have some understanding of where exactly it is that we, where we are and where I could retreat. Uh, That'd be very easy to explain. That way is safe, uh, like how to get back out. How to out. get back out, yeah. if he needed it. It is no use of me without being able to see it properly. I need to be able to form a mental image of my destination. What if... Hold on. I'm gonna take off the... Oh, good idea. The ring, which I can then hand to him, and then Resme can literally share a mental image of the path out, as long as he's holding it. He would take it, and as he has it in your mind, sort of link up here, you would immediately see a flurry of strange images in the brief moment before he realized the connection at this head. Um, things that look weirdly akin to the uh, strange meeting quarters where you had met with the pack masters in the council chambers of Katapesh itself. Uh, you would see the dark tapestry that is the sky, a blackness pockmarked pockmark not just with the small white dots of stars, but with strange, bulbous, almost elliptical, uh, elliptical vehicles of some kind, fire erupting from their behinds. You would see cool. a settlement crafted of strange metals and materials you don't understand, much uh, more akin to what you've seen. You would see an inside of some kind of a great machine, pipes running with brightly colored fluid and strange crackling pink electricity running between nodes uh, before this is canceled. And his mind darkens almost entirely to a null. Hmm. Enough. Uh, the Pact Masters, I assume, have promised you fair and just rewards for your assistance to the city of Kanapesh this day. I will ensure that they are delivered properly and that they are to your satisfaction upon your execution of Treagle and your evacuation of myself from this Red Pyramid, assuming that is still where we reside. Yes, uh, thank you, my lord. Here, allow me. <laughs> Very well. Take us to Treagle. And he just kind of uh, holds the uh, the ring between two fingers and, and one hand. Uh, again, you can see each of his hands only has three fingers splayed almost kind of in a triangle into uh, the closest thing to a palm he has on the other in his top set of arms while his lower arms just remain crossed uh, in front of his waist. It is a large size ring because it grew with me. You take it off and return to medium. <laughs> it's permanently oh. large. It's part of his equipment. When I he suppose grew. part of your ritual, right? It is a big ring. It's like a bracelet to him. Mm -hmm. So he probably has it in like both hands here as he's holding on. Well, a large size finger is like a bracelet. So he can still hold it in one yeah. hand. You could still but that's, hold that it. But that is like a bracelet more than a ring to him. Hmm. Huh. Mm. Neat. Oh. Well. <sighs> on our way. <laughs> Easy money factory. Get a bunch of level 16 lizard folk. <laughs> <Get them. laughs> Give them jewelry. Step one. <laughs> <laughs> Level them up. All of the jewelry triples in size. <laughs> but there appear to be no other prisoners the Scarlet Triad is currently holding here beneath the Red Pyramid. Sundarkon here looks like he's the only one they have held on to or at least kept. 
Um, well, rightfully so. Yeah. He killed him, that caused a lot of problems. <laughs> There's no, But he is here. He is alive, and you have him, and he seems uh, committed to following along with you as you uh, meet out justice, as he so succinctly put it, to Etrix Tregal and the rest of the triad. Yeah. Long overdue justice. So Darkon wants to watch. <laughs> oh, yeah, we all want to watch. Fair enough. All He's right, welcome then. to come along and watch. I, I assume he There's... would hand the ring back. He's holding on to it. He's not giving it back. Yes. I'm going to uh, need the ring back now that you know the way out. Ah, I see. It is important for uh, what we do. This uh, understanding of the building's blueprint will aid me some way in making my escape alone, should it be necessary. But still, without uh, being able to properly see my destination, uh, my teleportation magics can carry me no further. I appreciate the understanding of the upper levels you've granted me, but I won't be able to travel there directly. I am told bit. you could use your legs if you really wanted to. There's nothing but death and blood behind us. That was more the implication. I <laughs> could teleport short distances to what I can see and make the rest of my escape from there. It was more intended so you didn't get lost and take the wrong route. I understand. I appreciate this intelligence and thank you for it. Now, to Trigo. Right, let's get on with it. There was that one door to the south of us. Uh, should we? Uh, it's been securely. It's been secured by the rod, though. So I don't know if we actually even have to worry about it or just head on to the northern section. I vote for just heading on to the northern yes. section. If they can't get out, um, honestly, the uh, the archers are not very strong. They couldn't pull the door out of my hand. <laughs> As you come back out here, the fire that is uh, was obscuring the Phoenix Forge has died down entirely. The room is still full of smoke. Um, and you can see the only flame left is a red and pink, most conical peak in the center of the room where the forge once sat that seems to smolder. As if you come out and converse, a uh, long neck and bird-like head extends out of that and turns around to look out the passageway your direction. I'm just going to point at the other way and then point at me and... What are you going? <laughs> so we're going this way. It's like, did you? Hello. And again, Celestial, the Phoenix would address Rez. You. You're Soki, who can speak enlightened tongue. Step forward. Step forward. Please don't burn me. It's going to eat you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. I'm, done. I'm, I'm translating. You can have it. I, I'm translating. I'm, as, as it's just literally just, as he's talking, I'm translating back. Oh, lunch. Uh, I needed nutrients. Raz, Thank you. I, I'm just, I trust I'm the just Phoenix. As I'm you're just... approaching, uh, <laughs> corpse on fire. You're making your way up here. Uh, Sandarkon sees. Uh, sees the phoenix and sees Rez and turns to it and uh, again his arms kind of crossed raises one hand up in greeting and then says out uh, in celestial as well we have no time for this we seek to slay the master of this pyramid we've no quarrel with you stay <laughs> and then just continues walking with the rest of the group or, uh, toward uh, closing the gap We're why have we stopped I, I'm following him. I'm totally with him. I want nothing more to do with the firebird. I'm grabbing Raza, Severin. You, I'm talking to the bird. You've approached. Bird how, how often do you get a chance to talk to a phoenix? You've approached the doorway here. The ah. phoenix cranes its super long neck, like right up to the edge of this walkway. It's going to be like five feet out in front of you. The head of this thing, about as big as Raz's entire body. Raz it could even you one gulp. It. it could easily eat you one gulp. <laughs> What the rest of you doing? As you clearly see this I, Leave it. I'm done. I'm done. Nope. I'm watching because it's interesting at the very least to see Raz walk towards death yet again. <laughs> I am within yoinking distance in case it tries to eat him. To like right behind you him. You got a leash on Raz. <laughs> like a child no, I'm grabbing leash. you by the tail like, Raz. <laughs> Raz. <laughs> Raz. <laughs> on my tail. It's very uncomfortable. I'm, fo I'm following the money. Rashid and Resme, are you continuing on? Uh, if, if he's continuing on, we have no choice. Well, well he's not going to leave us. He's pile of leave us. dead gluttony I, demon that is choking this hallway it. here that is a large obstruction, preventing you from easily moving forward uh, back to this northern pass. Here, when you're talking to the bird, I'll shoulder it out of the way. Roshin's just going to set her just shoulder and start trying to roll into it. it. Yeah, <laughs> and you would sink 
deeply it's into close. the uh, dead oh. fat of this. Oh, uh, it's worse than the gugs. As it almost <laughs> kind of envelops around much of you before you really find enough purchase to try and push at all. I'm not shield sh really, just so yeah. I have breathing room. I'm not shrinking that. <laughs> it's way too big. You definitely can't cut it in half. But uh, <laughs> shrink part stop. for later. This phoenix, <laughs> looking at Raz. It's bacon. Demon bacon. And you can see that it actually does, within the flames, have uh, have some manner of features. It has bright white eyes within the flames. It has uh, what appears to be the most solid-looking part of its body and a beak emanating out from these uh, flaming feathers. Again, these, this plume of two long strands stretching back behind it. Who are you, young Yusoki? Oh, my name is Raz. Just Raz. Mortal matters and uh, conveniences so strange and fleeting. You would think I ask who, and you would provide a name. <laughs> well, my name is my story, so yes. Hmm. But if you want to know who we are, we're heroes See? of Breachill. Yes. Oh, they're the heroes of Breach Hill. I'm more like a uh, um, you're speaking, chronic chronicler. You're speaking an angelic tongue. We don't know what you're saying. And you, angel, angel, angel. You are heroes of Breach Hill. Speaking <laughs> angel with the, the phoenix. Yeah. I yeah. heard heroes of Breach Hill, though. Hmm. You are not beholden to the wizardish story, are you? It's little Raz. Is the wizard the one that built the pyramid? How many years have you walked this world? A few dozen at best, perhaps? Like 34. Is this story... Has her domain passed fully? Well, completely. I she didn't even no know about her. holds sway over the red pyramid she crafted? I didn't even know she was a thing until we came here. So it is not her who has worked this. Uh, and she just kind of turns and cranes back to this against blasted forge in the middle of the room. Has worked this infernal machine... These past moons. Oh, you're looking for a cur named Treagle. <laughs> he kind of turns her head, and it was not you then. No, definitely not. It was uh, uh, Treagle. That's kind of narrow a bit. The what? whims of mortals seem pointless to me, but I have met none such a fool to as, as to willingly sacrifice themselves to me to attempt to push some unnecessary pretense. I see no reason to doubt you. And I'm really bad at lying. And she just kind of turns to the rest of your friends. Hi, you don't eat us. <laughs> you can tell those unenlightened that walk the path with you that they have my apologies for the misunderstanding. It has been millennia of rage contained within this contraption, and I had no knowledge that a story no longer commanded her whelps within the pyramid. I assumed you were thralls. That's an easy assumption to make. You missed like what a thousand years, trapped in a pier or trapped in a forge. He, she says she's sorry. Can you tell her I love her? The little bird says she lo he loves you. Just kind of looks. Just ignore him. And looks back to you. He he waves at her. <laughs> That's my look though. If you have no means with this forge and you have uh, no connections with the wizard who entrapped me here, then I suppose I have no business with you either. You, uh, how do you look right now, Rez? I am six points away from Max. How's everybody Regenerate. Else? Regenerate. Regenerate is a fantastic thing. Uh, Roshin's still, still beat up a bit. Yeah, missing a little bit. I got some scratches. Tell oh, you, okay. Tell your allies to approach the brink. Come to me, if they will. Severin is there. Uh, she wants you to approach. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm She's very, very calm. Absolutely. Uh, trust me. I mean... I mean, you're right at sure. least half the time. And I was wrong when I entered the room and caught on fire. So this time So I'm you're right. due. You're due for a right one. Yes. All right. And uh, right. send Darkon and comment to the group of you. Uh, is Tringle that way? I misunderstood the layout of the land here. We're getting assistance. Every weapon Actually, helps. Uh, speaking back to him, it is entirely possible he is this way. The men who were in this room were trying to go to him through a door over here. So it is possible to have more than one way. And, we uh, have not finished checking everything. Gosh, she's beautiful. The phoenix turns her head back towards Rez and uh, sort of pulls back 
and raises her wings up, almost arced over the full group of you. Wow. What would be shadowing were they not still burning with a white, almost light bluish fire. Uh, but surprisingly, little heat really radiates down towards you. Uh, you would hear an incantation come from the phoenix's beak as she casts a spell. I'm going to assume it's some kind of heal. And everybody would heal for 42 health. Oh, wow. Oh, she casts a three action, yeah. eighth level heal over the group. 42. Almost max. I'm, Wait, yeah, so I'm, pretty, I'm pretty close myself. I am max. Please thank her for me. Um, and oh. just do a, a bow. It's curtsy very deep. <clears throat> Salute. Though this is an ill apology to tend to wounds caused by my own blind fury, it is the least bit of soccer I can aid given the situation at hand. Little Raz. I suppose I will rest here a moment. Stretch my wings as I can. It has been some time since I have enjoyed any measure of freedom. And once I find my way from this place, should our paths cross again, may they be as friends. Oh, I look forward to that. Wait until Talmira met a phoenix. It's exciting. How often do you get to meet a phoenix? Well, that's going to go on the wall. Gosh. <laughs> Krishala. Krishala. Small one so interested in names. She's so beautiful. And uh, her gaze would just kind of roll across the whole of the party uh, before she pulls her wings back and then just kind of folds them back down out to her sides a little bit. Um, still just sort of perched on this massive destroyed foundry in the center of the room. You'll actually see tears roll down Resume's face as she looks at uh, her. Make me a either bardic lore or a nature check there, recalling knowledge guy. Recalling knowledge. Let's do with that bardic lore. Use that big brain. Bardic lore, phoenix, or whatever. Mythical um, creatures. <laughs> mythical creatures. It is nature. That they are just they are they just are animals. Natu- yeah, They're they are natural. Animals. They're incredibly rare. And, and it's a 30. With a 30, I mean... That's you a are, phoenix. It's phoenix. You have heard... But this is a, uh, seriously a storied creature of legend, as I said before, one that would be as much a mythical figure in Galarian as it is the actual world. This would be amazing to uh, any and all of you to discover that they do it. They do truly exist, and they are as powerful and magnificent as these tales tell. Having met one in the flesh, uh, the whims of a phoenix, even literally seeing a phoenix, uh, streaking through the sky almost like a shooting star against the night it's the night's blackness being the only time that they've ever really been recorded by common folk is uh, again can is how we see a shooting star it is something it's said uh, said in folklore to grant a wish having physically met and spoken with one in the flesh the things of legends itself much of what you've heard uh, you have no idea how much is or is not true but even with a 30 uh, it seems clear enough to be able to put together that they are not creatures of evil hearts or simple bestial whims. They are intelligent, they are wise, and they are uh, one of the closest beings in this world to a true force of good. Okay. Um... They would have an aura powerful enough that that would be easily, like, you would feel it in its presence now with its rage subsided. Almost peace. So, I'm guessing she's pretty friendly toward us at this point? More I mean... Uh, Raz, uh, will you do me a favor and, um, translate this for me? Okay. Uh, Kishara, I would be honored uh, beyond measure. Uh, to receive even the smallest token of our meeting to pass down through our family as this is the greatest honor of my life. Uh, maybe a feather? <laughs> Shameless request. Shameless, Shameless request. request. 
Uh, uh, translate translating it word for word. Just... May we have some down from you, please? <laughs> yeah, in case one of us dies. <laughs> Make me a diplomacy check. This is my moment. Do you want me to? You want me to Better roll use a hero point on this. For? You can aid. Are you translate. You can absolutely aid resume if you wish. I don't need Because there's a chance I blocked awesome. the translation. <laughs> <laughs> can I assist in case I screw no, up? No, roll a nineteen. <laughs> uh, you're legendary. No, I'm not. Oh, I thought you were legendary. No. Oh, not diplomacy. No, performance. Okay, I thought you were legendary diplomacy. You're nope. master? No, trained. Oh, plus Fair two. Plus. Yeah. I told you. You want to roll the Malachite? You're trained in diplomacy? I'm a legendary in performance and legendary in occultism. Oh, huh, fair enough. Huh. Oh, worst bard I've ever heard of. Bardic legendary. lore is directly tied to occultism. To occultism. Yeah. yeah. I, I got a hero point, so... Uh, you got a plus two. You got a plus, plus two? two no, no she wants the Malachi dice. No, I definitely die? don't. No, I'm fine. Thank you. Yeah, it's got Keep good thing RNG. Don't touch me. It's a nine. Okay, I'll take it. Um, plus two. It's an 11. It's 12, it's 13. And... It's a 40. 16th level DC. It's 35. It's a rare creature. It's plus five. The power invested to be my math. I'm pretty sure that's 40. Yeah. Hero point value. The, uh, <laughs> the exact lethal system. Right. Well, I went from an 8 to a 9 on the hero and you point. Needed the I one. needed the <laughs> you one. I needed Plus that one. one. Plus ones, ones are so important. The uh, Phoenix yeah. kind of cocks her head. The Phoenix down for everyone. She actually had no idea that this. This would be a fair exchange that Dad's repaid. And uh, steps forward Happy towards time. the landing, raising one wing up out to the side and kind of leaning almost the shoulder towards you. For you to take one feather of the phoenix. Resme's hand is literally shaking as she does it, but she's doing it so carefully. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you okay over there? It's on fire. fire damage. Take 16 points of fire damage. That's fine with me. Worth it. As you pluck away a single bright feather, uh, again, almost seeming to be a living, dancing flame itself that narrows down to a dark and almost brown quill. Very much physical and surprisingly uh, cool enough to handle with no real difficulties. One <laughs> feather from the phoenix. It's going to be difficult to store, seeing as it's basically a lit torch all the time. Um, Bags of holding. Put it in the hat. hat. There you go. Hat's in the hat. Puts well, the phoenix feather in his hat. It just has a fire on top of his head. Marshall, the big dwarf seems to be out of coins. Mr. Jake, the impaler's got that from you. Thank you, Jake. Keep Marshall fueled. Now, I know not what business calls you to the ancient undercrofts of that witch, but it is clear that whether you are its new retainers or nay, you share no kinship with those others that were here. And she turns around the two smoldered bodies just kind of on the back behind her. Um, one very crispy corpse on the ground and one still clinging to the handle of the door. <laughs> Charred and dead. Mm -mm. Nor do I. And then she just kind of pulls back and sits and sort of pulls her head and her neck back in and goes back to this sort of comfortable resting position on top of the forge here. Ah, there's ah. so much I want to talk about. We've got Trigal to kill, so... Yep, we, we well, better get going. On the subject... Are we done here? Uh. No, we're not, actually. <laughs> You'll see, upstairs, there was a secret passage with a trap going the other way. It's very likely to be something similar here. The main way in would be obstructed somehow, but they were trying to get to Treacle through that door. They said so themselves. They listened to them trying to go and warn him to flee. Then huh. proceed. You, you understand my commands, yes? 
Then the go point, to him and kill him. The point being, do not yell at the phoenix. We're going to this room. And he just sort of gestures one hand. Oh, then lean forward. So we will go at least the check this way and see what there is. Good the plan. sooner I may quit this place, the better for all of us. Can you yeah. believe that just happened? A tire of its stone. It's a modern legend. <laughs> Raz emits five feet of light permanently. <laughs> no, she didn't give me the feather. We How? No, I'm not we? no, I'm not giving him the feather. That's my feather. How are we storing it? Put out the fire. Um... Put it in your headband. Yeah, probably what Bag I'm gonna do. Actually, is an extra mi- dimensional space that you can't burn from the inside. Actually, I have two bags of holding, so the I'm gonna. Problem put... is the other things in the bag of holding. No, I have yeah. I have nothing in the knapsack of uh, of halfling kind because I put it in my higher level. So I actually just will put it in there. There's nothing for it to burn. Actually, uh... there's no oxygen in the dimensional I... space. Does but it's it, not exactly a regular fire. It's it not exactly a regular fire. And actually, along those lines, um, I've got an empty potion bottle. Yeah. Put it in the potion bottle. Put it bottle. in the potion bottle. Put it in my knapsack of uh, halfling kind. Take the tarts Lovely. out so it doesn't toast them. Well, Preserved phoenix feather in a bottle. Safe. Gathering to the northern doorway here. Uh, it would push outward easily enough to just a very small landing, barely large enough for the size of the door swinging outward before a second uh, sturdy but simpler door barred the way into another one of the strangely angled hallways that are so omnipresent within the Red Pyramid. Um, As it kicks 45 degrees around to the right and uh, narrows very dramatically, you are back to the passageways reminiscent of what was in the initial foray foray through the museum. It is a small walkable uh, uh, hall through which it would be somewhat difficult for two men to pass each other side by side, much less walk together. Uh, Trajik will absolutely be squeezing his tiny little, little, little lizard body through here as hard as he can as this hallway uh, again continues to jut and twist almost at random with these sharp angles. Uh, this is one of the few areas of the Red Pyramid you've encountered so far that is wholly unlit. Uh, there are no lanterns, no sconces, no light within this narrow passageway save that which you bring yourselves. So if I mechanically need to be squeezing... That's at a rate of five feet per six seconds. Yeah. Um, this is narrow enough that you would be squeezing yourself through here, and so you would functionally be moving like speed five. As so, you're and that is also your exploration activity that you're taking in addition to hiding, is squeezing. Yeah. Well, then... So that, if you're doing that at the front, you are not seeking. You are focusing yeah. on hiding and squeezing. Well, that raises the question of, do we want me in the front with space in case there needs to be a retreat, or do we want me in the back... In the back. But Probably. then there's no way to retreat because you can't get past me. Oh, we're not retreating. Then the back it is for me. <laughs> Easy. We're not doing that. Yeah. That is that is an option that we right. will not take. You want the front, then I'll be right behind you. Sounds like a plan. And uh, Roshin is going to actually be seeking okay. because it, it's important for the per- someone in the front to be paying attention to it things. very much so, yes. So Roshin's at <laughs> the front. Marshall's scouting just behind her. Uh, followed by, I imagine, Resme and yep. then Raz mm, um, as they are looking Both. and thinking and Trashik taking up the rear, squeezing himself through this narrow hallway. It would jut around one more time after some 40, 50 everything. feet. As we revealed the interior wall, it was inevitable that we were going to accidentally kick over the line of sight barrier there into the he big wall. He did so wall. well. You got yeah. so close to getting them all in there before one of them kicked over. Yep. Don't worry about covering it. We can, we can fix it for next week. Oh, easy. He controls Z then? Is that? Oh, you can reset it and then do it on active. I see what you mean. He's got buttons. Uh, the hallway would shortly after its second sharp angle terminate in a much more standard interior wooden door, simply carved and set in a traditional frame. Uh, though it does appear to, uh, much like the rest throughout this, uh, throughout this entire pyramid, be of ancient make, it bears no ornate locks or massive reinforcement. You know, Dalwyn and Rur would have loved that. Seeing the phoenix. Oh, yeah, you were telling me about them. Who? The My- members of this group before us. Oh, brothers in arms of past. Got it. <sighs> Ella would have loved it, too. Well, Jerry's not out on her yet. But we have this door here in front of us. 
Um, and Roisin's going to kind of put her ear up to the door and listen. Um, Sounds woody. Make me a perception check there, Roisin. You're at the front. Uh, resume, you can roll one, but you're pretty far back into the door in the way, so it's I mean, not great, but you can roll it. <laughs> we'll see. That's nice. That's good. It's, uh, That's good. 41. 17. Um, with a 41, you hear from the other side um, what appears to be a magical incantation of a spell cast uh, mid progress. Uh, but one that is particularly elaborate. Mm. It is not a simple two, three action spell. This is a, seems to be a casting of some several minutes that is currently engaging. All right. Ritual going on, it sounds like. 45? Uh, 45 for the back. You'd, you'd hear the same thing. You'd hear something from back there. You would hear clearly voices. Uh, and you could tell this was being enacted by what appeared to be two voices, both female. Krogax. I'm going to cast a level 9 heroism on myself. Level 9 heroism? Big boy. Titans, level 9. I get plus 3 to everything. Big. Most Is it everything. time to DOS boot? Uh, can, can, can I get a perception check to see if there's any traps or anything on the door? Yeah, that with that, right? you would see the door yeah. bears no locks okay. nor any kinds of uh, possible right. traps. Here we go. I'm and disappearing. Shoulder that door open. I'm shouldering it. You you're, were you casting something where you going? Yeah, I'm disappearing. Like I'm casting disappear. The oh, disappearance you get disappear. on myself. It's okay, so you get like the, the whole undetected until somebody finds you thing. I don't know that this I'll is Treagle's room. Pop but... a one action in Viz from my armor. I've got one left. Okay. So as the two of you disappear, Marshall raises X and Roshin shoulders this door. You do slam it, hit some resistance, but you went to shoulder it immediately. So you smash this open, uh, casting back what appears to literally just be a. Uh, finely made but ancient and simple chair that has been propped up <laughs> <laughs> against the inside of this, which would cause you to tumble forth into the room uh, immediately into what appears to be a massive and fantastically well-appointed library here. Uh, this chamber is dozens of feet across and around, floor to ceiling bookshelves filling every visible wall. <coughs> Three huge columns rise up, spread throughout the chamber, each of them as well filled with books and even set around their middle with an upper stone walkway jutting out about halfway up towards the vaulted ceiling 20, uh, 20 25 feet overhead, allowing access to the upper reaches of this library. Three separate staircases working their way up to each of these three separate platforms. Um, just past the corner underneath this nearest platform north of you, uh, you can see colorful emanations of energy as a spell is taking place. Uh, you can see there are a few figures in this chamber, some largely obscured by the column on the far side, but the one nearest you on the ground, just 30 feet away to your right as you bash through the door, is Atrix Treacle. And he stands there with a... Uh, Scimitar in his hand and a spiked scarlet kite shield strapped to his other and turns towards the group of you and raises his shield as he, as he pivots to face you. Finish the ritual. You allow us that. It's nothing that will harm you. Getting our non-combatants to safety. Pages, scribes, secretaries. We've nearly evacuated everyone. This is the last of them. Yeah, I don't trust recognize, him as far as I can throw him. I can recognize something as a free action. I'm listening to the ritual. What, what is it? It is a teleport spell that's being cast. Um, and is, as it in, is in the back of the room, uh, you can see that the one who is uh, presiding over it is Miravel, who's primary casting this, being aided by somebody, uh, by two figures up on these uh, upper platforms of two of the different columns. One is one you don't recognize who is also encanting, and the other is Jellic Jasmine, uh, the public front of the Scarlet Triad, who is lending his power to it as well. Can I um, get a perception check to see if he's lying? Uh, yeah, that's... I mean, it is a perception. It, it is a teleportation spell, whatever it is. Uh, uh, Roshin is... Listening if someone's is lying is... Gonna, a, gonna try uh, to incite him also. She, her exploration activity is seeking. You give me, give me a perception check. All right. On the die, uh, that's gonna be a thirty. Table cam made it almost full speed. Yeah, I know, right? Be a thirty-eight. Well, with thirty-eight, 
regardless of your opinions of this man here, he does not have any of the telltale signs of a liar here. If he and you sense a wee bit of almost an edge of desperation in his voice. He does seem to care about this being completed, and you get the sense that that is exactly what's happening. If you move a little further into the room, just to be able to see what's going on here, he will kind of adjust himself, shield up, but allow it. Do you still have some 20 feet from him? It would uh, turn with your gaze where you can see uh, what appears to be a young woman, maybe 16, 17 years old, who is certainly not dressed for battle. Um, an middle-aged woman and uh, a younger, like, mid-twenties man, all three of which appear to be largely, uh, probably Katapeshi locals, who are the subject, clearly, of this teleportation ritual that Miravel is enacting. Don't be stupid, Tregal. We've never slaughtered non-combatants. In fact, even to this very day, any who, dis- who dared to lay down their arms would have been able to walk out of here in one piece. All except for you. And at that, um, Mirava raises her hands to the final incantation. The three of them in the middle do shimmer and wink out of existence, leaving just uh, Miravel herself down the far side of this column on the ground, Jellic up on the raised platform, and Tregal behind the stairs. And it applies for the both of you, too. If you want to leave, this is your opportunity. If I want it out, I could have taken myself with that spell. No, I committed to staying long enough to see that those that trusted their lives to me would be safe, as safe as I could, safe as I could make them. I'm here to stop you. Oh, I'm talking to the two ladies. You're not going anywhere. The other lady that was secondary casting is also gone. She, uh, sorry, she got, she's gone too. I'm it's talking to Mirabel. Mirabel, Jellic, and uh, Mirabel down the ground would come around as you were sort of coming into the room. You would come around this central column into view of much of the rest of you, while uh, Jellic would take out his bow up in the top level and knock an arrow. Not draw the string, but knock it just kind of at the ready. So she is. Maybe 10 feet from Tregal. The pair of them are 20 feet or so from Roshin. Hmm. Which would look across the group of you not seeing Trashik, seeing Raz, obviously. Would we be out of the... Yeah, you would You would be uh, making your way into the river. No one's getting terribly close. She would just shake her head. I know what you've done. I know what the triad's done and what they're here to do. Patrick's has sacrificed everything he has and everything he still could his men laid down their lives to stop you from ruining everything you as you always did simply killed your way through so you got what you wanted oh don't give me that trash all they had to do was stop and talk and they could have delayed us far longer than selling their lives and don't you dare try to do this on us Tregal takes like a small step over uh, uh, just sort of not walking, not between you and Miraval, but sort of towards her. What do you even know of what we've done? Oh. What do you even know of our operations? What do you know of our purpose? Hundreds dead, enslaved, tortured. It could be millions. It could be the whole of Galarian. Don't There's- give me that. I've read your notes. You're nothing but another tyrant trying to seize a throne from someone you don't like. You, you, think- s- you, s- you suckered her with honeyed lies, but you're not going to do it for us. Do you think you can do better? Somebody has to. If there is nobody here... When Dayhawk escapes from Elsetta's ring, the Age of Ashes will consume the world. Millions will die. Near none will survive, save perhaps those that have pleased, pleased them enough with their piety. The bloody-minded arrogance. You think that the entire world is yours to save. You're pathetic. I'm the only one with the means and the resources to do it. If you've come this far, I imagine what you found was our notes, my operations, what we've found so far. You know where I hail from. You know the powers I seek to beseech for salvation. I don't think I can do it alone. I'm no fool. But if anything still of this world can fight the hawk, it's Menkari, the strongest being Galarian has seen in ages. But that fool dragon can't look away from his idiotic endeavor long enough to notice what's going around uh, uh, what's going on around him to hawk will be free and the world aflame before he sees fit to rise against it this is pathetic you think that you can you've seen the truth of it you don't even trust the person you're counting on to even notice what's going on maybe uh, you're just wrong but it's too late for that now you've hurt too many you've hurt far too many fine then that's clear what you're here for. 
and I'll not back down. If you wish to see this through through strength of arms alone, so be it. <laughs> we've tried talk and we've tried the, the we've tried the pull of justice, but t your type never settles for anything less. You think? What may, may I ask? Do you think killing me here will accomplish? You won't start this all up again. You won't enslave more and torture more and kill more. The triad's gone. It's ruined. You've seen to that. You've killed everyone. Don't be stupid, Treagle. You built it up in a matter of years, and you'll do it again if I let you walk out of here. I've no need. This world will already be saved or beyond hope. I'll return to promise the hero of Galarian, or the last martyr that gave its life in its uh, gave his life in its defense. Who is it on promise that you talk to in all these letters who you seem to trust more than you trust Menkare? Look. No look! For Who is it? For all of my studies, I know little of magic. Miravel here has been kind enough to aid in the restoration of the orb, and the head mage of promise is the one who understands how to put it to practice. Who is he? Why does it matter? It you... matters because I say it does! Well, it matters because you know those orbs mean nothing but trouble, right? There's a whole history of Taldar being erupted in the flame and the entire country being torn from the skyscraper because Do of those orbs. Do you have, please, little rat, a better idea? The world will be scorched have in you... flame by Dahak with or without the use of the orb, but at least I would make some attempt to stop it. Yeah, an attempt that'll just end it all quicker. Would you see us simply lay is down he... our arms then? Is Pay he... fealty? To a mad god and hope he sees fit to spare us like the Charuka of the Mwangi Expanse. I'm still not really clear on why you think it is Dahok's going to break out after all this time. Who told you that? The the rings of El Set have been in place for thousands of years. They're older than than any other teleportation portals in the world. Why all of a sudden now do you think Dahok has chosen to break out? Who has been filling your ears with this poison? I doubt Xarxes is wrong. As one of the last few Ekajai remaining who is aware of exactly how the ritual was performed. You think that the Ekajai are going to release Dehawk? The Ekajai aren't going to release Dehawk. The Ekajai did their best. I will give them that. What is it they like? They were the world's vanguard when last the Age of Ashes loomed. They stood on the line and they gave more than any people should ever need to seal the hawk within the realm between the portals of the ring. It was not a permanent solution. They did not have the strength to stay him. Why now? It's simply a matter of time. time? They locked him in a cell, a prison to which a god has eternity to work his way free. It's an inevitability. It was going to happen at some point, and it's happening sooner than we had hoped. According to Xarxes, the seals have frayed. We don't know, truth be told, if it's the usage of the ring, or simply the work of the hawk. Maybe I discount the value of piety. Charuka themselves have some share of the blame here. Who knows? The point is he's going to be free. If I'm not here to stand against him, if you strike me down here, you shoulder the burden of this entire world. And from what you've presented now, you've not a tenth of the knowledge you'd need to save it. I still can't believe you, you think what you've done is going to is save anyone. necessary. The Ekujai sacrificed thousands willingly to seal the hawk, but the races of the modern world, greedy and insolent as they are, if asked, would not give a single soul. We've no choice. They did it willingly, and that was what mattered. Do you think it would matter if you tossed them to their death like slaves? Do you think that is the magic that sealed Dehawk? I think we would truly be fools not to at least try. Let's at least try murder and slavery. You never know, it might I work out. I have sacrificed no one 
unnecessarily. Those which we have taken, I have either sold to fund the restoration of the orb or aided in the operations of the triads and saw the orb's construction back to its completion. And what about your blood, Shriegel? If you could lay your life down on the altar of this thing, would that sacrifice be worth it? And a perception check. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! During all this, have I had enough time to go around behind him? You are sneaking. Make me a stealth check. 40. 42. This dice really likes to roll fours. Mm. You want the malachite back? I would like the malachite back, actually. Here you go. And I really, really, really want to sneak into position. <laughs> so malachite knows when it's not that's wanted. A 32. So <laughs> if I don't beat a 42. 32 will critically fail. It does. Against Treagle. And as you sneak into the room, with your 40, you see his eyes 42. kind of shift a bit. And he breaks your gaze for just a moment. Where are you trying to go? Uh, I was ideally trying to go up and around. Like on the wall to the south here? No, like uh, around he the room. He was trying to go like this way. Yeah. He would see you at the northern of the room and you would see him turn and make eye contact with your sheik for a brief moment. Stop. And then raise his sword. Fine then! Before lunging forwards towards your sheik. not smart. Did I get anything from the 42 before you he broke the, eye contact? Yeah, I told you. You got the kind of like, he, he, he broke it for a sec before he noticed your sheik. Oh, oh he looked away. He, he looked yeah. away. Oh, yeah. For yeah, yeah. a yeah. moment. Yeah. But. Pussy. <laughs> Just saying. Next week, we return to the finale here, of The kitty, Age of kitty. Ashes here on the Paizo channel. Here, kitty, kitty. We face Atrix Trigal, the prodigy of promise. Leader of the Scarlet Triad, supported by... 43. I was one off. Still critical, Kels. You never know. There's Loser. been a lot of plus You're ones today. Off. Aww. Uh, so the four actually would have done it then. It was a... Uh, what? Oh. It, you need a 36 that, to not critically fail. Yep, so that, that would have been exactly. Wow. You, uh... <laughs> supported by his right hand and Rez's daughter here as she, too, reluctantly... Ready as a spell. Next week we end it, everyone. Are we are we sure we're gonna end it? Like sure? Uh, one way or another. One way or another. One way or another. This is coming to an end. Send Darkin in the hallway here, just kind of watching, ready to see how this goes, ready to dimension door back down that hall if necessary. Does he have a bag of popcorn. I feel like he does. <laughs> Cashews. Yeah. Pistachios. We wrap this up. All right, guys, we're taking bets on who survives this fight. Early next year. <laughs> next goes. week's climax, notwithstanding, we'll continue to an epilogue with broken promises, probably 12 to 15 episodes of the uh, sixth chapter of The Age of Ashes on my own channel, and bring you a new cut of content, a new series, The Hook, journeying us through all walks of life, all across Galarian starting with the Curse of the Crimson Throne. I'm so excited about Early that. Early next year. This is happening no matter what that happens next week. That is amazing. But oh boy, are we doing some business next week. Thanks for oh, hanging yes. out, everybody. Thanks for being here. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. We'll see you at the final battle. <laughs>